what is oh, um, oh, oh, oh. Oh, what was that? Oh, oh, oh. Little, ro- little oh, rumble. Oh, 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 oh. We're back. The revolution is upon us, my friends. Hey, can I get a whale for everybody who's afraid of nuclear war? Whale! Whale! whale. I mean, a little bit, right? Not me. You're I'm not? built differently. I'm waiting. I've been playing Fallout New Vegas. I played all the Fallouts, you, you dude. You drive on chaos. You don't understand. I have in, uh, an entire room in my in my seven gerillion dollar compound dedicated to a uh, bottle cap collection. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all domestic right. terrorists. Let's go. Yeah, I, I, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I mean, theoretically, we are safe down here in our $20 billion bunker, but... Yeah. I get a little nervous when I see, like, Elon Musk is talking to Putin. And the thing is, like, in Silicon Valley and all these billionaires, they all have their own apocalypse bunker. So maybe they're, like, they're all okay in New Zealand. with the idea. They're all in New Zealand. I don't think anyone, like, I don't think anyone actually is okay with it. Like, just because you can survive, potentially survive nuclear fallout, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a fun time. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think... There's no cheery utopias about nuclear uh, fallout. It's always a dystopia, you know? Well, you can become... I believe an individual citizen in this country has a right to own a nuclear right. warhead. Except That's for Tim. True. Tim does legitimately want it. He wants it bad. He wants everybody to have nukes. The N-word! Well, the thing oh, is, uh, you know, Elon could become king, though. He could recreate the world in his as he sees it. I know, but if you're if you're king of uh, a completely destroyed landscape with no human beings out there, mm-hmm. I mean, what's the point? Like, I don't want to just be king for the virtue of being king. I want to. Not I wanna, you. I'm. I know. I'm saying like, man does not want to be king for simply the virtue of being king. You want to. You want to rule over something. Well, that's something that you want to preside over. Preside over about. something. Yeah, I mean. I'm sure there's a short Shakespearean play about someone who made his king on uh, ash and, you know, yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. That's it. But that sucks. Then you're just like, you know, you're the king of ash. More but like what? the king of ass. Got him. More like the king of being ashy, bitch. Yeah, but no. Welcome back, uh, Hassan. Uh, you had a, you were at uh, TwitchCon. AV was there. Did you guys ever, did you guys run into each other? No. Yeah. No. You were probably right. in the, you were probably... In the big time area, he had like an army of people yeah. following him everywhere. Yeah, it was it was a little it was a little hectic. I, I won't lie. I mean, I love I love meeting fans. It's my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. I, I love doing that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. But it gets a little it gets hectic every time I do this sort of thing. It gets more and more hectic. I feel like, and TwitchCon this year was just like, oh my god. I there was every time I stood in one place. I had security. Mm-hmm. Every time I stood in one place for longer than like. 30 seconds there would be a crowd of like 60 to 100 people formed around me right yeah i mean it's great yeah but there's not like a special area for you guys you big creators. we do we yeah. we have like i mean we do of course there's like there's lounges and stuff like that but i don't i mean i i go back there every now and then to you know just get some get some water and stuff but other than that i'm, I'm swan diving into the crowd all the time that's a so. lot that seems intense well i just the way i see it is that uh you know these people have one shot at getting to meet you and if uh they're watching me for eight hours a day you know what i mean i I might have helped them get through some tough times Mm -hmm. and that's usually what i hear from a lot of people Mm. um and this is the one moment that they have to get to meet me take photo with me i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure i mean it's it's important for them okay we love that uh a king a man of the people did anyone brandish it? Did anyone try to stab you or anything like that? Any, no, nothing? not hey, that I. Good. We love no. that. That's good. No one tried to wear your skin. No, I mean we. There were some touch and go moments, but it, it's whatever. It wasn't that big of a deal. Okay, it was just, good. No, it was, no attempts on your life. No attempts on my life. There no. is something here that was kind of a problem for me. I mean, what are you doing? What the fuck is this, bro? Are you trying? Or is it because I kissed Young Gravy last I'm week? Sorry. You're trying to what, do some what, shit. What's up, you? Also, Carl Jacobs, like, stay in your age range, bro. How old is Carl Jacobs? This is a problematic age gap, for sure. Yeah, how old is he? He's like 18, bro. I mean, no, like- no, he's like, he's like 23, 24, I think. But, you know, still, that problematic a- age gap. That's six years, man. Seven years. Uh, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. 
Yeah. He does look 18, though. Yeah, he look, he's a young. He's a yeah. young boy. Just, nah, Carl, yeah, Carl's the man. Is. I love Carl. All right, Carl. so you're out there kissing guys. You're Gosh, fighting girl. in the death pit, which, by the way, I wanted to ask you about the death pit because we were talking about it yesterday, how so many people got injured. Somebody broke their fucking back in this goddamn thing. Another person dislocated Adriana their Chechik, knee. Uh, Adriana Chechik <clears throat> fell, uh, jumped into the pit, uh, dove into the pit after her victory. Yeah. Um. And 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 you know broke her tailbone. I believe her. She had such severe spinal injuries that she had to get spinal surgery immediately. Um. Multiple rods were placed in her. Multiple metal rods were placed in her spine. She has no bladder control at the moment. I mean, you know, I hope she's doing all right. Uh. Hopefully her recovery is swift. Uh, but who knows? Who knows what'll happen? Those things are no joke, right? So how fucked up was this ball pit? I mean, you, you know what's crazy? Yeah. This is after. That we didn't even know they that did. that had happened. <clears throat> but they kept it going. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Did they keep it open the whole time? I think so. I think with the exception awesome. of the last day, I think. The, they closed it the last day only. <laughs> they okay, closed okay. it the last day, but this is like, we closed it out That's on great. on Saturday. I love We that. closed it out, uh, but who knows? Sorry. Yeah, uh, XQC and I uh, duked it out. You know what I mean? We got Let's our- take a look, yeah. Finally. You get, we got our licks in. No more balls on his face. I mean, this is, you got like a hundred pounds on him, probably, yeah. What is wrong with you, But take the L, bitch. <laughs> Too bad he's not the one that broke his back, huh? Oh, so. oh, chill, okay, no, 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 no. I don't want, I don't want. Why do good things happen to, why do bad things happen to good people, I'm just saying. So, um, yeah, XUC and I duked it out twice. Mm -hmm. He wanted to smoke twice, and I, and I, I ripped him. Yeah, of course. I ripped him big time. He could take you out, man. Yeah, we um, we actually, uh, you know, by way of Ludwig, have already communicated, uh, I had, like, the, even before TwitchCon, about uh, his uh, <laughs> his heavy implication in me uh, making it seem like I knew and, and was, like, undermining sexual assault allegations and stuff like that. We had... Hash it out on my Has podcast. He clarified that uh, publicly. Yeah. Okay. That's on my different. podcast, he did. At, on my and other he, podcast, and he said he said those things just because he was angry, right? Yeah. So that's really not. That's probably like kind of a bad thing. No, he knows. It doesn't actually, sound very good when you say it like that. No, he he yeah. I mean, he admitted it. He was like, "Listen, I I, I fucked up. I'm sorry." Yeah, oh. you, yeah, but just well, just, nice. be, just being well, is it? I mean, yeah, you, you if you apologize, ass grifter, it is. dog shit, moron, motherfucker. <laughs> like all this stuff, all this th <laughs> shit, like him saying all this stuff, he he just straight up admitted. <laughs> he was like, I don't believe in any of that. I just said it because I knew uh, I know other people believe in it, and they're gonna get mad and repeat it. Yeah, you that's bitch. kind of fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just to apo after apologizing for, it, but that's pretty low life shit. I mean, look, we'll see. Only time will tell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um, the good news is nobody will ever turn on our juice or XQC. It will never happen. Yeah. But the good news is we got the best sound bites uh, that we could ever That's drink. That's true. Yeah. Exactly. Get your, your balls, balls off, off my, my face, face man. man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that one. That one's great. Um, speaking of the podcast, uh, you... I I have people who you are lovers with on the podcast, like Jeff Woodek. Yeah. And then I have people apparently, without even realizing, that you have beef with on the podcast. Like who? <laughs> the Sway Boys. Oh, okay. That's... They called it. I saw, I'm looking at it right now. Okay, yeah. Let me pull this up. Yeah, the Sway Boys went on your uh, Fear and pod. Yeah. And um, Carl Jacob again, bro. What's going on? I love, I love. Why Carl. are you making me? You, he's, a, you, he's out. He's out in you LA. Me jealous, I mean, bro. You kissing him? He's on your podcast. Carl's the number one homie hopper. <laughs> yeah, that's what they call him in the Minecraft community. But yeah, no, I love <laughs> Carl. Funny. He's great. Yeah. So here's Bryce Hall and uh, what's his name? Uh, Jared Joshua Richards. Josh. Yeah, he's a Josh. He's Josh Richards and and Bryce Hall. Bryce is actually pretty nice, so I'm I'm I don't know what you're about to say to him. I, I was say about him rather. Like well, I was actually shocked because I I first met him uh -huh. when I went on uh, Tiny Meat Gang with yeah. Cody and Noel, and they had like an intro skit, like a sketch that they had filmed with them, mm. that they were gonna film with them rather, and they kind of just like dropped them on me on my fucking interview. I was like, damn, bro, I'm not good enough on my own. You had to bring yeah, fucking, why did you do that? Like the top Viner, what is this shit? I mean, I'm Viner, you're fucking, I'm so old, TikToker. And and they were like no 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 whatever but it was funny it was I funny. I did find that it was, odd that they paired the two of you guys, but it worked well though. It was a funny dynamic. 
Yes, yeah, so I saw this clip, and my reaction is actually pretty funny. Let me just show you guys what they said about me. H3? Yeah. It's called Leftovers. He hates me. Yeah, wait, really? Like, wait, 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 why? Oh, Ethan Klein, right? Is yeah, wait. Yeah, he hates me too. He wait, what? what the fuck? Why? He hates just our podcast. podcast. Bring it up on the next podcast. Yeah, yeah, like, yo, I had Bryce Hall and Josh. And just I like, hate them because they are on my lawn all the time. Damn it! Those boys don't know how to respect the good lawn. I'm is, just it, a, is it like the the party? I didn't know these were the party guys. I don't know if they're the, the party COVID guys. The COVID party guys. Oh, that's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Bryce was. I don't know about this dude. The other one was he's Dave Portnoy's uh, co-host. Yeah, so he's caught in the crossfire yeah, every now and then. <laughs> yeah, Josh, it'd be, it'd be funny if he didn't, the didn't the and they were just doing this so that they would get in that podcast. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? No, I, I have no idea. He is shit on my life multiple times. Really? Yeah, Wait, really? Podcast. Shits on me. Should we cut? Should we cut them? No, no. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be honest. I don't I don't have beef with them and I don't really I mean I've talked about them a few times, but I don't really know what they're talking about. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Well, I think just because you like casually may have talked shit here and there, they think you hate them, but that's just that's just how you talk. That's just well, Ethan. well okay, <laughs> first of all, about everybody. Squash it. First of all, this man is in the crosshair of some oh. really heavy hitters. That, He's wait, like, that, wait, that's Harvey Weinstein. Yes, indeed. It's so hard to tell, but that's actually Ryan Kavanaugh. Oh, wait, what? Stop. So hard to tell the difference. Thank you. Stop. He looks more puffy oh, and red no. than you. Oh, no. Get away. You. Get away, Bryce. What are Why you doing? Why does he look so puffy and red? And his Too much teeth. wine. Sorry. His teeth look weird. Man, what happened? What, do you get red when you drink a lot of alcohol? If you're an alcoholic, does yeah. it change your skin pigment? Yes. That might be what's going on with him. I don't know. I mean, but You don't have a comment yeah. on that? I mean, I, 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 I don't want to get sued, man. <laughs> well, next to Bryce, Bryce's skin looks good, uh, but... Yeah, Bryce is looking beefy. He's yeah, looking so thick. He's, a, he's looking nice with it. Yeah, Get away from him, Harvey. No, don't Bryce do it. Bryce is a beefcake. I've said nice things about Bryce. I think I, you know... We, the only thing I can think of, other than the COVID parties, where you ever went in on Bryce, was there was some video where he was beefing with somebody and he showed up at their house and tried to fight him. Wait, you really? know what I'm talking about? There, but there, this was years yeah. ago. Yeah. The, well, the you kind of dedicated a front of me segment to it. it yeah. was right. Like, I remember we talked about on front of me and he showed up at somebody's house mm -hmm. and was like it getting was in their face and it, it was pretty dude. It was we, a few we, years ago. So. It was a while ago. Yeah. But, but that's yeah. the only thing that comes to mind where you like you want to bury the hatchet. It's up to you. I think I, I think I'm offered to bear. I'd love to bury the hatchet with uh, Bryce, young Bryce Hall. I'll be the mediator. In fact, didn't we invite him on at some point? Or? You tweeted him last summer. Yeah, and he, he said yes. I think he, did, he even then, was down, yeah. yeah and then he, but, what, are you big time him? You're like, no. No, no, I him. I think he big timed me. Wait, really? No shot. So. Maybe, but he's with Cab Cab. So, so he's like yeah, Cab Cab's big star. Cab Cab's starting a, a video production company, which, of course, he has a great history of that. Yeah, it always uh, goes great. Relativity Media, of course, he, he uh, bankrupted that, if you guys don't know. He's also anti-vax, apparently, but okay, whatever. Oh, yeah, he wasn't vaccinated. He Last wanted to year? come in during the like, height of the uh, pandemic. I was like, just, we are asking all of our guests to show proof of vaccination. And he's, so like, what was he's like, no, I'm not doing it? Yeah, basically. That's crazy. Well, yeah. I'll ask him. I didn't blast him for that, though, or anything. I was just like, you know. Yeah, I don't think he's like, well, then possibly. we're not doing it. I mean, I don't get, I don't blame him. Dude, you know? when I, after H3H3 I got, podcast, mediation session, where we vaccinate him. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> Let's get him. Yeah. Let's Dude, give him the jab. So fun. Like some yeah. fucking yeah. clockwork. Speaking of vaccinations, shit. this is a tangent. It's unrelated, but did you see MIA? Yeah. Dummy, stupid. I, we all I, like their stupid dude, song. Why fucking, fucking it up? <laughs> yeah, I just I can't believe it, dude. Then apparently, apparently she became like a born again Christian. Uh, for the record, for <sighs> those of you who don't know, Alex Jones got hit with a fat lawsuit. We're probably going to talk about it in yes. a little bit, but yes. Uh, and then MIA like <sighs> as a take on that was like, oh, if Alex Jones is getting hit with defamation, what about if Alex Jones has to pay a billion dollars to like victims of Sandy Hook? Then what about all the celebrities that lied to here, millions right here. of people about the vaccine? Yeah, so I don't know. I think she just has that. All I wanna bing 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 boom is take your money. Yeah, and no, I, and we I, all had so much fun with that song. We all cherished that song. Well, Why it's not you... just that. Like Mia, you know, she's a she's a brown artist in the UK. You know what I mean? Like, in it, I think I think she was always. <laughs> She always had like decent political takes too. I think she was like right. overly political. And then apparently during COVID, she had a born again Christian phase. Dude, nothing, nothing is worse than your brain on your brain than being a born again Christian. I mean, that is you better, you better um, off smoke my pants. They're going born again. Mike Pence. I mean, that's like ninety percent American. Mike Liddell. 
It's d- dude, your brain on Born Again Jesus is like yeah, Michael so Del- fucked up. Shouts out the crack. <laughs> Crack, only, maybe crack did him in before. Only, no, no, I mean, I, I don't know, man. It seems like he was better on crack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she goes, if Alex Jones is paying for lying, shouldn't every celebrity pushing vaccines pay too? 115,000 likes. That's crazy. Well, there's a lot of dumb people in the world, 115,000 motherfuckers man. were like, the hell yeah, that's great. That's a great take. Yeah. Or no, sorry, they were like, hell yeah, that's a great fucking take, MIA. I'm oh. a, I'm a be... <laughs> Woo wee! I'm be give me that money. Ring, 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 and no, give me your money. You, you gotta do it. You gotta do it in the accent. You gotta be like, <laughs> Yeah, you right if Alex Jones pays for lying. Shouldn't every celebrity pushing vaccines pay too? Brexit was a fucking great idea, mate. <laughs> I've never heard you do your British accent. <laughs> what was that? It's a work in progress. Yeah. But I think it's Americans that are liking this tweet, to be honest. Yeah, probably. But, I mean, British people probably, too. I don't know. British people are pretty dumb. I mean, we're going to get demonetized. You you hear that? And, oh. I was trying to pull up just the uh, the sound effect part so I could uh, accompany you in your. Playing with fire. Oh, just find a cash register. Why are you trying to. Bro, why are you playing with my back? This stream is literally called. Am I a paper planes edit just the sound effects? But clearly that was uh, a lot. Bro, why are you paying with my bag? I'm gonna yeah. deduct that from your paycheck. Jing, All right, jing. dock it. Give me your money. Dock it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, she's an idiot. There's a lot of dumb people in the world. I've been watching a reality show based in the UK dating show, and these. What people, is it? Love Island. No, Love Island. It's uh, oh, a twin dating game. Yo, it's called Related and Dated on Netflix. It's so fucking <laughs> oh, weird. No. What? And anyway, they're mostly English people, and name. they are just bottom. They're so dumb. I'm like, I'd be like, wait, related and dated, mostly English people. Oh, shocker! <laughs> Why do we, did the English know for inbreeding? I mean, the royals, <clears throat> the royals. <clears throat> but that that's a specialty. That's like, listen, that's what happens when you're fucking stuck on an island for a thousand years. I was gonna say, you know it's a I mean? pretty small it's, island too. So yeah, a lot of lot of inbreeding. Not a lot of folks out here, in it. Yeah. Wait, wait <laughs> that's like oh, southern. Oh wait, speaking of in, uh, incest. Just because I'm gonna skip around a little bit, I have a related oh, are video you, are you of Dennis Prager. Prager. Yeah. Oh, let's go. This motherfucker God, he's would so fit good. right in on that little island, baby. He's just he he want to be Cardi so bad. He just wants to be British so bad, dude. You can't. So okay. this is this is a great. Would you consider this a great uh, conservative thinker? They consider him right. I think he's the best. He's brilliant. One of the top dogs. There's a, un, a univer- top G. University named after him. Yeah, yeah. Prager, you not know. fake, real, yeah. real university. Fuck just yes. a, it's just a YouTube channel. Not one of those <laughs> fakes like Phoenix University or something. Like this is a real one, accredited. Yeah. yeah so he's going the route of saying that we everybody gets their morality from uh, the Bible, and uh, well, he's got a yeah. Really no, he had a checkmate atheist argument, and I was checkmated. Okay, I was Let checking me tell you, out. I had not, I had not considered incest is wincest before. <laughs> Dennis Prager dropped these hot truth bombs on me. Basically, what I heard was he wants to fuck his sister. Yeah, no, hot truth bombs and hot loads inside of his sister. Oof. Yeah. Like, air, air is da- dead. So is it good. Prager or Prager? I say Prager because I don't give a shit, but I think Prager. it's Prager. Oh, okay, okay. All right, here he is. Let's see here. Human slug. God, you just you just hate him because he's so hot. So slimy. Just admit it. You hate him because he's hot. He's so fucking hot. <laughs> Dude, he hot. is. I see what you're doing. <laughs> he is the most repulsive man prepped. He's so ever. sexy. He, he, you're just this, you're just you're just hating on him for, for being sexy as fuck. <laughs> uh, oh Three time divorce court champion, Dennis Prager. Just some, just imagine that someone's had sex with that man. Oh, His hands many many women all have. over them. Many women have and potentially Breathing. allegedly against their will. Considering his own writings on the subject matter, right. uh, famously wrote, when a woman isn't in the mood, part one, and was like, <laughs> damn, that was so fire, I gotta drop the second one, and then wrote, when a woman isn't in the mood, part two, where he justifies uh, spousal rape, right. marital rape. Well, who would sleep with him willingly uh, at, the end of, at the end of the day? His sister, potentially? Mm-hmm. I mean, let's, let's take a look. What does he say? What, what? All right, let's watch the whole thing. Okay. okay. It's I'm not hard. pausing it, you dude, understand? Dude, yeah, okay, bro. <laughs> Don't try it. Don't say shit to me. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> okay, how about wait at least 30 seconds? It's just going to be hard. I'm going to hold on. Let's see here. Mm-hmm. Public nudity calls are interesting. Hey, pups. Anyway, none of you have a secular argument against it, and I don't blame you for that because it uh, there isn't any. 
There's no secular argument against adult incest. What about childhood Brother incest? Brother and sister want to make <laughs> love? Mm. What's your argument? Mm. That they're going to produce mentally retarded offspring? D- drops That's it. Nonsense. It takes many generations of inbreeding to do that. Can we? Uh, yeah, I, 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 did I make it to 30 Yeah, I did, see? 36 seconds. Yeah. Can we get a soundbite of him saying mentally... Uh, R-worded? Uh, re- retired or whatever we started. Yeah, I'll pull it. Yeah, we started. Good. Yeah. He just, there is no secular argument against adult consensual incest. Bro, is this what you talk about on your radio show? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? When you have a radio show, I thought this is exactly what you talk about. Adult incest? Guy, are I love we, this. <laughs> what the I love fuck? this so much. Look, it, it, everybody everybody has the age-old like checkmate atheist argument. Like If you ever had an r slash reddit atheist phase or anything, you've encountered this argument a million times, right? Like the... The notion that like morality comes from the Bible. Yeah. It's a bit of a self report in my opinion. Anytime someone's like, Well, you know, if, if it wasn't time. for the Bible, people would be out there murdering each other. I'd be like, uh, well, one, they still do it. And two, the fuck, it's not the Bible that's stopping people from doing that. You want to just do that? That's crazy. Right. Um, but this one is probably the worst, like it's the worst mathematical way to go about describing incest as like a bad thing. Because he's basically saying it's actually good if it wasn't for the Bible. He says we'd all be doing it. He basically is, he says, first of all, he says adult consensual love. Here, just keep going. He, he has a, a point in here. argument. Sex cannot enter family life. It's a big taboo. I do it with everyone. See, people think <laughs> that we can live without the greatest source of wisdom and morality in the history of the world, the Bible. That's what they think. There's a point where he says, He's such an idiot, some secular bro. conservatives think that. People all around the world living without the Bible, completely fine, man. No, the, there's a point where he actually, in the beginning, I think I missed it, where he literally says, like, you know, a wonderful loving relationship between brother and sister. And I was like, why would you use those terms? Like, and I mean, look, my man knows his audience. He's like, he saw his numbers dipping in Alabama and he was like, we got we to gotta dip back into that pool. I know you out over. there, brothers in Alabama. Family. Family. Yeah, that's a different kind of family. We know you out there, brothers and sisters. You want to fuck your dear brother. Now, let me tell you now. Resist that urge, Lord. It just makes it more sexy if you can resist it. Yeah. Yeah, he's like... Just let the tension build up. <laughs> But, but like, technically, you're not even doing it for inbreeding reasons, like, for genetic reasons, apparently, according to Dennis Prager, you're doing it because the Bible told you not to. He says... He's Yet a- another thing the Bible is trying to stop you from having fun with, if you ask me, okay? Yeah. No fun having ass Bible. I'll tell you who does allow incest. Satan. It's another reason I'm going to hell to fucking have a good old time. Yeah. All, every, hell's a party. Well, Dennis Prager's definitely going to hell, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't realize they're yeah. living on the fumes of the Judeo-Christian value system. But if you ultimately extract those flowers from the soil that nurtured them, those flowers will wither and die. I don't want to see that happen, so I'm working so hard on this commentary. You're working too he's hard, saving, man. He's, he's saving our death. lives. He's saving America. He's saving the world with his commentary. <laughs> he really sounds close to death. Here's Now, just to deconstruct his point, which is so stupid, it's like, he says, we'd all be fucking our, our, our siblings if it didn't say in the Bible not to do that. First of all, before the Bible, I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of record of inc- incest. wasn't like a common practice, I don't think, before... I mean, humans have been, civilization's been around for 100,000 years plus. I don't think everyone's fucking their sibling, and the reason for that is that... Well, you know who did the first act of incest? Adam and Eve. I mean, technically, Eve is literally a part of Adam's rib. You know what I mean? This isn't a bridge version, you're right. And they piped it up. So there's a lot of conflicting stories within the Bible here. You know, what's going on? You... Technically, Eve is from Adam's rib. Therefore, you could say Eve is Adam's child. Therefore, the original act of incest is how human humanity started. Yeah, I mean, well, that's why I believe in Scientology instead. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, it's true. You, we all started from Adam and Eve, so I mean, yeah. not, the gene pools are struggling there in the beginning. I believe in Scientology, but the black Israelite version. The Eric Andre, uh, L. Ron Hoyabembe. Eric Andre? Yeah, Eric Andre. Uh, well, I mean, this is a bit that he did, but... Oh, um, okay, thank God. I, I, love, I, I love thinking that there would be a black Israelite version of, of Scientology. And there, there, L. Ron Hubbard was a black man. L. Ron Hoyabembe. Oh, that is good. That yeah. is good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think there's a biological... There's been actually studies about this Prager. If you looked into it, you fucking pasty ass doughy little bitch boy. Um, there are there's something about when you grow up with a sibling in close proximity, you have this natural uh, lessening of sexual attraction to them. It's some kind of obviously genetically uh, behavior that's encoded in our in our DNA. Sexual for fantasies. obvious reasons, which is that, yeah, breeding with your immediate family members is not does not produce. That's healthy, how you uh, get the royal family, dog. Yeah. You want that shit? I mean, they have traceable because of uh, uh, centuries of. Oh, here it is. The, systemic yeah. inbreeding. Yeah, the the royal bloodlines did have they fuck brothers traceable. And sisters? Yeah, oh, they did. Gnarly. They did all that, or they were so in. They were so inbred. They were so intertwined with one another. Their familiar relationships were so close that, like, I think in the in the Spanish royalty, where like the Habsburg jaw comes from, which is a traceable genetic disability, uh, that is directly a cause of of uh, inbreeding for centuries. But it was so. It was. It was. Uh, <laughs> So oh. rampant. <laughs> oh, God, no. This is what happens, guys. It's so This thing, is the guys. world Prager wants. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but it was so it was so traceable, like, that, for example, distant cousins that got married, like the parents of this uh, sausage-fingered fellow here. <laughs> right. Uh, it was actually much closer genetically than, than actual distant cousins, mm -hmm. like, normal, in a normal circumstance. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, so dude didn't look very far. Uh, the West, the Westermark effect is a psychological hypothesis known as reverse sexual imprinting. Um, people tend not to be attracted to peers with whom they have lived like siblings before the age of six. Uh, excuse me, this actually, uh, this actually is false. Have you seen step sibling porn? It's about yeah. sex. Yeah, it's um, all. No, it's but very that's, popular. That's actually. step. It's very. I step. know, but but the imprint should work because mm, if they're if, you know. Well, no, it says before age. six. Maybe, maybe you know what I mean. Just exploding saying. Milk porn. What have you seen? Uh, exploding milk porn. Oh yes. Like breasts. Uh, actually, the Westminster milk. effect has achieved some empirical support. Yada yada yada. Maybe we'll send this to Prager. He can read up on it. He says there's no mm. evidence. But Prager, go fuck your own sister. Who gives a shit? I love how he goes. This he turns into a. Uh, he turns into like a. Uh, a sociologist here in a sec. He goes for that because, it uh, there isn't any. There's no secular argument against. Adult incest. Brother and sister want to make love. What's your argument? That they're gonna produce. Give me one yeah, good reason. This is what I'm saying. He's like, <laughs> uh, he's like, I'm asking. Like he, he looks like he's earnestly reason, trying to seek please. out an answer. Mm -hmm. Brother and sister love. Dog, you didn't have to. You didn't have to ride so hard for incest. <laughs> didn't have to <laughs> like, do it. Like the I incest, get the point you know, you're trying to make. Close incest too. The incest he's not even talking about cousins. Listen, the in incest community thanks him for for his support. Baby sad. But no, this is my favorite part. He goes. Mentally retarded offspring. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right. Right. What's your argument? Yeah, here. That they're going to produce mentally retarded offspring? It's nonsense. It is? It's many generations of inbreeding. You well, have to, uh, I think it increases the likelihood that you will, uh, what is it then. like? No, 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 no. Yeah, there's I, like a, there's a coefficient. Debate perverts love talking about this shit. Yeah. It's like their favorite thing. Uh, but um, I think like incestuous relationships, Especially between close siblings, brother and sister, has a chance to to increase uh, genetic disabilities. But 
Uh, not entirely certain if it's like off of the. Uh, here, here, yeah, there's a coefficient of the inbreeding. So, Prager, this is good for you. You might want to crunch the numbers here. Coefficients of inbreeding is an individual is the probability that two. Uh, wow, lots of scientific stuff. Two allows that any locus in an individual are identical from descent for common ancestor to two parents. The coefficient of inbreeding is the probability that two allows that a given locus in identical descent. Just give me the numbers, man. How? What if I f have a baby with my sister? How many fingers is it gonna have? <laughs> Tell me. <coughs> yeah, sister. there it is. Anyway, the guy's a freak. This is what con this is what uh, right wing conservatism looks like, and that's Dennis Prager, and that's your brain on Jesus. I rest my case. Thank you. MIA, go fuck your brother or something. Thank you. I rest my case. Yeah, I don't have a problem with Bryce Hall. Anyway, go back to this, but I wanted to tell you about CavCav. So he made this video production company. He's only making videos with TikTok stars. Uh -huh. Bryce Hall, the D'Amelios. Uh, there was someone else. Who was it? I'll, I'll check right it's the whole D'Amelio family, that's right. This is his big old, this is his plan to get paid, <clears throat> to get paid. <clears throat> and so Bryce is his golden boy, so I think there's some friction there, but I'd love to make up with Bryce. I mean, obviously, um, I'd love to try to poison his brain against Kev Kev as well. I'd Wait, like don't, to- Don't, don't reveal your, why do you always do this? I'm just being honest. You just, you, you reveal what you would do eventually. Uh, even if you're gonna do it, you don't I'm have to front, say it. I'm up front, bro. I, say, I speak facts only. Oh God! I will, Bryce. I will tell you. I will poison your mind against your benefit. Well, now he's never gonna come. Cav Cav's not gonna want him. Coming. Well, listen, Bryce. When that shit goes belly up, which it will, the man's never run a successful business in his life. Come and we can talk shop about Cav Cav. The man is a fucking loser, degenerate freak, and he's got the growing lead. Uh, his he's starting to look more and more like a glass of wine. He's been drinking so much of it. Thank you. Too much right. wine, sorry. And this kid, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Yeah. Josh Richards, yeah, he's on Barstool. And uh, I don't think I've said that. I don't think you've really said it. anything negative about him. You're always just mm -hmm. making fun of Dave Port Portboy. We, we may have lightly shit on him a little bit. I don't think so. I think my comments were pretty much like, why is Dave making a podcast with an 18-year-old or something like that? But I guess maybe it's a little dismissive of him, but I don't think I've shit all over his life or whatever, but, you know. Come on, Bryce, let's talk shot. I, I have no yeah, invite him on, Hassan. We can do a Bryce Hall special here on let's Leftovers. Let's do it. I'm down. Sloppy Leftovers, we'll call it, because of... Kev Kev likes that sloppy seconds. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Um, here's a great story. <laughs> Thank you. The bull's angry. This story is awesome. Uh, yeah, we watched, I think we watched this video a minute ago. This guy, there was a hate crime, a Biden hate crime. Absolutely. Yeah. A terrible stuff here. Someone burned down this dude's camper and car and they spray painted vicious, hateful slogans like Biden 2020, which as you really know- Really fucked up. <laughs> Which, as you know, all violent vigilantes. Trigger, yeah, trigger warning. Uh, you're going to see some really horrifying hate speech here. Yeah. Plastered Federal all over. Federal officials now joining well, the investigation. Everyone thought it, it was fake, obviously, because, like, who the fuck? I didn't. I knew it was it real. Was and in my heart, it still is. Of a Trump supporter. So I okay. hope there certainly Federal isn't any new information that came out yeah, about this shame. particular subject. Yeah. Now joining the investigation. Federal What's officials going on now here? joining the investigation into a suspicious fire at the home of a Trump supporter. A Trump flag, a garage, and several cars all going up in flames. Oh, As Fox 9's Courtney got horrible. reports, the homeowners say they're pretty shaken shit. up. It's horrible. I feel like if we didn't wake up, I feel like it could have gotten to our house. As you can yeah, see man. right there, the siding and everything just started melting. The windows on this side already shattered. Yes, One security brother. footage shows the moment Dennis and Deanna Mola run outside to find their garage and several cars on him. fire. I woke up this around 348, as we know from our ring camera, uh, to a <laughs> loud, very loud explosion that like, shook the house. Before flames left their Brooklyn Center driveway in ashes, police captured this photo. Spray painted on their garage. This is my favorite shit, bro. You are Biden so fucking 2020, dumb. Biden 2020, BLM, and then the anarchist A. 
I, there, those are in con contention. I don't think like, anarchists. Yeah, are none of those, there. none of those dudes fuck with each other. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you put like every leftist <laughs> slogan that you think is leftist together. Okay, that's what happened. And there ain't no Biden stand out there who's burning anyone's house down. Okay. Yeah. But in 2020, bitch, die. No, they ride. They ride so hard. <laughs> Biden 2020, BLM, and an A with a circle around it, a commonly known symbol for anarchy. We live in, you know, the greatest country in the world, we and sure it, the, the greatest thing about America is we have the right to, to, to say what we want to say and mm -hmm. to not, you know, be attacked for it, and I no, feel like that's sir. totally been violated. Well, anyway, these fucking idiots, the story... Wait, wait, keep it going. Oh, let, oh, him, oh, let him glow. Okay, let him okay, glow. Okay. Police right. believe the couple let may have been targeted okay. as they had a large Trump flag displayed <laughs> on a camper and another flag on the back of one of their trucks. Man, that's really it's fucked up that they did really that to these guys. Of the flag, Unforgivable, man. I wouldn't have gotten it, you know? I, I don't want to deal with this at all no pussy why are you wearing a mask yeah he's not a real trumper dude a political sign up and with two small children at home uh -oh. they say this is likely the last we feel almost so silly that you know we could have put our children's lives at risk even though it was not something that should have been should have been should have it shouldn't have risked their lives in the first place yeah, horrible stuff. Well, it just came out. The Wait, department don't, don't tell me. I mean, this is just, this is an everyday experience. The Trump supporters, I mean, they're always under attack, Ethan. Biden 2020, Don't tell bitch. me this is fake. The most fearsome words. I mean, what? People uh, are department of Justice announces a Brooklyn Center man has pleaded guilty to wire fraud after staging an arson. What? Dennis Mola. Be... I know it. Dennis what? Mola. That's a different person, right? No, that's talking him. About? That's him. No. no. Dennis Mola said the vandal sprayed Biden 2020 BLM and an Antifa symbol on his garage door, then burned his own camper. Stop. Or that then burned his camper because he drew a, a, drew a, flew a Trump flag. In reality, Mola started his own property on, set his own property on fire and spray painted the graffiti on his own garage. Mola also created and allowed others to create two GoFundMe accounts for him. Mola had uh, $300,000 in fraudulent insurance claims. Come on, man. And more than 17000 from individual donors. I gave him GoFundMe. so much money, Ethan. I yeah, gave him so no. much. That's gave why I say be careful of GoFundMe, Hassan. I took, my, I took all the, the child uh, alimony payments <clears throat> that I had, child support payments that I had, and gave it directly to this man. You, Look at me. Egg on my face. You gotta okay? be more careful on that on that GoFundMe. I mean, it's so perfect. I mean, they did this. They did this with a wall. Remember that guy who's like the quad uh, quadriplegic uh, guy who who did the fake like we're gonna build Trump's wall. We're gonna take matters into our own hands. Yep, yep. And then they did wire fraud too. It's awesome. Milk these motherfuckers, man. They they got too much disposable income. Okay, every HVAC uh, business owner, small business owner. Every fucking, you know, uh, jet ski dealership owner that was passed down to them by their dad. All these fail sons are like, we got too much money and nowhere to put it. It's so good. Um, well, who would have thought? And actually, it made me really sad when they said they had kids. I was like, well, you guys are really fucked up. Yeah, a lot of these, <laughs> a lot of these people do procreate. And you realize, like, wow, yeah. A lot of fucked oh, up. Oh, man. So there oh, it is. Um, who would have seen it. that coming? Uh... Moving on, we've got the John Stewart owning the Arkansas Attorney General. Do we like this one? There was an update to this story. I haven't seen it, so I'm I'm excited. Everyone's been talking Wait, about. Wait, you it. haven't watched it? No. Oh well, fantastic. Let's watch it. I thought it was so, great. This is the first off. This is the first ever. You know, I um, I am a fan of his show. It's pretty good. I think on Apple TV. This was a yeah, really good. Yeah, you're episode. lib. <laughs> Um, the only thing I don't like is he does these round tables and uh, I just fucking hate round table conversations, but no, I, I think he's, mm, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I grew up with Jon Stewart. He's very formative. <clears throat> uh, I'll admit like back then, uh, I, I think what he was doing was incredible, especially for someone like myself. I was like, damn, no one is actually talking about. No one is actually criticizing like American imperialism, or no one's actually criticizing America in this way. Uh, and and there was a reason why he was considered one of like the most valuable news broadcasts, even though it was on Comedy Central. Um, but now I feel like his, like he has his personal uh, pet projects that he truly cares about, which is great and wonderful. You yeah, know, he's always he was always uh, ride or die for the responders. first responders. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's been working on the burn pits thing too, but
But uh, other than that, I feel like his commentary, unfortunately, comes across a little dull at a time when, you know, when when systemic issues are are, are way more apparent. You know, and he's I, not really undermining the root cause, and he tries to always fall into that trap of of fixing uh, the the capitalist structure from within with capitalist solutions. But anyway, let's let's I see agree. what this was I, probably I good though. I think some of his previous episodes were a little toothless, but this one he really hit uh really hit hard. Actually, I'm going to try to find a longer clip because this one's only a minute long and I'm not sure if it John Stewart like what made John Stewart John Stewart was his no holds barred approach for the most part to certain things. Now looking back at some of his commentary, I re- I recognize that yes, even for back then it wasn't, you know, as as cutting edge as I thought it was, but you know, I, I still hold a special place in my heart. Well, you're gonna love this. This is this is very good. So the background on this is, <clears throat> she's the attorney general for Arkansas, and they've passed a law. Arkansas. Ark. Arkansas. Hey, what? Now Ar- I'm so confused. Why does it say Arkansas here? It is Arkansas. That's how. It's- oh, that's her last name, bro. I was like, what am I looking at? No, I, I say Arkansas, Arkan- Kansas. No, I say Arkansas as a joke. That's it, it's But that's her fucking to... name. Wait. No. Arkan- no. What does Arkansas mean? Only no. In Ar- that's how you write Arkansas, Ethan. Are you kidding me? Only in Kansas City. <laughs> Arkansas. I got another one. I think I, I know, I know. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> no, I you make that joke all the me, time. Bro. The shit on Arkansas. <laughs> It's not your fault. Um, <laughs> you confused the shit out of me, dude. I, it's I not did. Because you were saying Arkansas, and then I looked at this, and then I started. Well, English Arkansas. is weird. English is weird. It's not. No, you fucked me, bro. No, I got you. I got you, Ethan. You know what it is? It's because Jake Paul said it on the show before. It was a meme when he said Arkansas. Yeah. Wait, Jake sure. Paul does you Arkansas me that too? Yeah, I got. It. Oh, what the fuck? That's um, my shtick. Anyway. So, uh, the Attorney General of Arkansas, they're they passing a law. Like that, just based on what they told I said me. it right, and then y'all fu- started fucking with me. I am dyslexic. I, I, have, always, I have always done this. I because am dyslexic, okay? You it, it, can't It's a double me. whammy. I like to make fun of the state, just as I make fun of every fucking state. And also, um, I, I like to make fun of the English language being so fucking weird, where it's not... Um, what's, the, what's the term? There's a specific term for it. You can't... Like sound, you can't sound out the English language adequately. Phonetic. It's not phonetic, yes. So, um, you know, like, why is it Arkansas and not Arkansas? Listen, guys, I'm dyslexic. Okay, leave me the fuck alone. Um, here's the thing. So she, they passed a law saying that prohibiting kids under 18 from getting gender affirming care of any kind. And um, uh, John Stewart absolutely eviscerates her for this. There's actually an update to this story as well, which is satisfying. We're going to allow these children to be children. And as they are, we want to, again, encourage them to have the he- access to the mental health care because none of us can imagine whether it's my daughter, mm-hmm. your Why? daughter, it, your son, any of us can imagine having those conversations. If my daughter or my son came to me in agony and I knew there was a program that I could get them into, that had positive effects on their mental health, I would swim across rivers and climb mountains and tunnel through whatever I needed to get to to save that child's life. And my guess is you'd do the same. And I, and I truly hope you're never faced with that decision because I imagine it's agonizing for the parent. Yes. And it's agonizing for the child. But the fact that you've removed that option for people seems antithetical to the values you profess to espouse. Well, again, we're going to allow... You know what? That's obviously not doing it justice. Let's just pull this up. Uh, I think the whole thing is really good. Should we watch this or you want to do move on? I mean, I'm down I'm down to watch it if you want to watch it, but we got a lot going on today. We got Alex Jones, Kanye West. Did you guys upload this whole thing? Try and does it, did it get claimed? Uh, no, this the, is on YouTube. Only the short clip. Yeah, you didn't check the the whole thing. No. Yeah. I don't know how litigious Apple Apple TV yeah, Plus that's, is. I mean, probably very. Look, but. the the point is, 
he's absolutely correct. These guys are brutal. The only difference between this and like the abortion ban, even though it comes from the same place of like malicious, uh, uh, you know, hurtful, oppressive uh, policy making, is that it impacts trans people and uh, and not fifty percent of the population women. Um, so there there aren't that many uh, people that advocate for it. Gender norms are. Uh, a, a very important part of our development and the way we understand it is very rigid so a lot of people have uh, you know built in transphobia from the jump for that reason so when something is like so boundary breaking as the existence of trans people which have historically existed way before western civilization and will continue to exist um you know and and if people don't want to really understand gender as a social construct they want to keep going about it they want to keep going about their lives without recognizing that maybe the way we understand it is different, right? And maybe we were wrong. Um, so there are not that many allies for this cause. So yeah, you can get away yeah. with being as brutal as possible, mm -hmm. which, you know, Republicans are never going to stop. They will always do that. So, you know what? I think this is actually a really important issue because trans advocacy is so important. I mean, like you're saying, they're basically the most fucked minority of people right now and actually the most high risk too in terms of like self-harm and stuff if they're not getting the proper treatment i think this this segment is so like impactful and important let's just watch why it. would the state of arkansas <laughs> step in to override parents physicians psychiatrists endocrinologists who have developed Can I ask, what's an endocrinologist it's a specialist who, and it, that's like your uh, your hormone system. Okay, got yeah. it. So that that would be a right on the nose uh, medical expert. Yeah, got it. But guidelines. Why would you override those guidelines? Well, I think it's important that all of those physicians, all of those experts, for <clears throat> every single one of them, there's an expert that says we don't need to allow children to be able to take <laughs> those medications. That there are. <clears throat> many instances right. where but you know that's not true you, you know it's not for everyone there's one there's these are the established well i don't know that, that that's not true i don't know that <laughs> do your fucking you, research you dumbass then, you what the fuck if you don't know that that's true wouldn't you well i know that so? there are doctors and that we had plenty of people come and testify before our legislature mm -hmm. who said that uh you know we have 98 percent of the young people who have gender dysphoria right. uh, that they are able to move past that Ethan. and want it was blocked our stream no not your stream but i just re-uploaded so i'm just a warning it got blocked it got blocked i was just trying to say it's apple okay let's not right, fuck let's around with the block. but but the point is it's just so stupid it's like the point bro, is she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking I'm about i'm promoting your dumb fucking show john stewart you idiot it's not his <laughs> fault he doesn't well, know, he well didn't know you know it, it's all he has their no fault control over it it's all their faults so. um yeah the 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 gender dysphoria argument is super disingenuous uh, because, like, it factors in anyone that it factors in every single person. Like, it, it basically factors in anyone and everyone, right? Um, and and not everyone that feels dysphoric as a as a uh, as a child uh, is trans. So it doesn't factor in uh, exclusive trans people in that documentation. It, it factors in everyone as cis. So the underlying assumption is that everyone is cis, and then they experience gender dysphoria. It's disingenuous. Um, and if you were to look at actual experts on the subject matter, if you were to look at all the studies conducted on this, you would see that it's overwhelmingly positive, and detransitioning across the board is like a really rare, an incredibly rare uh, phenomena. Well, the really. one, and the one thing that they always misrepresent is that like actually un irreversible transitioning there's like a super high benchmark within kids that they have to uh, yeah uh, they have to check off the list and get all kinds of approvals from doctors and associations and stuff but the i guess the one thing i want to say about this clip is she keeps referring to these there's other people there's other doctors there's other specialists that say we shouldn't be doing this so <clears throat> we found out who the experts are that she is referring to uh, one of them is uh, Dr. Patrick Lapert. She's a plastic surgeon who's allowed her board certification to expire, and she doesn't even practice uh, surgery anymore. She runs a Botox clinic in a strip mall 
in Alabama next to a pizza hut. She's never, or he's never worked with a trans patient and has no experience treating gender dysphoria. They quoted this doctor. Wow, shocking. In in passing statewide ban. I mean, yeah, it's disgusting. (laughs) It's so fucked up. There's just quote, these are the people that came and testified in front of their legislature about this. Did they be like, so tell me what it's the same do you tactic. Do? I mean, what but do you do? It's like, the same tactic. Fo- it's the same tactic with abortion. Like both are medical procedures. <laughs> this right? is where he works. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. Um, both, Shout out Alejandra for both are medical together. procedures, right? That uh, you should be able to get freely. Okay, and uh, they will always find like one random crank doctor who's like, "Nah, that's uh, I will go against the scientific consensus on the matter." And that's all it takes. They don't even need that, really. They're just padding the deck. Like, they're going to... Because their their point isn't genuinely, uh, you know, saving people's lives or anything like that. Um, they are aware that it's just uh, purposely done for cruelty. Cruelty against the marginalized community that they've demonized. Um, well, they're a great scapegoat. They love this whole... Yeah. The, 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 everyone's trying to go uh, trans. By the way, thank you for the gifted... Uh, Deaf Noodles 20 gifted. Thank you for the gifted... Um, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, the main purpose behind it and the tactics are identical and with respect to trans people, it's like, because they make up a smaller, uh, a much smaller percentage of, of every community, uh, whether it's because they're purposely pushed aside, whether because people cannot realize that they are trans. Oh, shit. Um, I got banned. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> bullying and harassment. <laughs> that's crazy. We're bullying the attorney general of Arkansas. Or Kansas. Or Kansas. Um, say that to me again. I won't ever heard that word again. But for those reasons, uh, it's 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 difficult to um, it's difficult to combat the the sea of hatred. Let me just say here, real fast, Doctor Paul uh, Hures is a doctor affiliated with the hate group Alliance Defending Freedom. He objects to gender-affirming care on religious grounds. He doesn't care about trans youth. He stated some children are born in this world to suffer and die. He said that. Good doctor. He's a doctor. Yeah. Yo, some kids are just born to suffer and die. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Are you Satan, so bro? Is Mengele, you know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> Holy, they're giving fuck. they're giving doctors to everybody out here. <laughs> this guy went. This guy went all the way. Got his MD to just say shit he's like the, that. He's the he's the one in ten dentists that doesn't recommend Crest. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, another one is Dr. Stephen Levine makes his entire living on denying trans people access to gender affirming care. And his testimony referred to trans people as narcissistic and his practice of form of cons- conversion therapy on his patients. There's like a whole, it seems like there's an exclusive little club of trans hating freak doctors that just, they get paid to go on, take the yeah. show on the road. Yeah. There's a, there's an industry for everything. Yeah. And then finally, Dr. Mark. Uh, Ragnaros, who wrote the infamous New F- Ragnarok, Ar- Arkansas, New Family Structure paper in 2012 on same sex couples and the effect on children with a terrible methodology. Uh, he was thoroughly discredited by this study and has no expertise in the care of gender dysphoria and trans youth. So there it is statewide legislation based on four quacks, to put it mildly. One who just openly wants children, so he's cool with children being born in this world. Suffer and die. There it is, guys. Uh, shout out Arkansas, ladies and gentlemen. Love, love that. Love that for them. Uh, I say support trans people as loudly and and openly uh, as as you can. Let's talk about Alex Jones. This motherfucker just got a billion dollars. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of people who uh, you know hate <coughs> trans people but actually secretly loves trans people, Alex Jones. Alex Jones number is, one, is one number of the, one chaser, just like Joe Rogan, yeah. by the way. Oh, was Joey? Joe Rogan apparently on his like latest uh, uh, podcast with like Ari Shafir and another dude openly stated he loves watching uh, chicks with dicks <sighs> fuck other Joe, chicks. Wait, Joe said He's like, that? dude, it's less gay. It's like a woman with a cock fucking oh another woman. Oh my god, that's so. <sighs> that gets my Which is pretty funny because it's like, yeah, dude, <laughs> you know. The the one thing that's not queer, lesbian porn. Okay, it, it's certainly not gay. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> but wow, that's so interesting, Joe. Okay, wow. 
Uh, that's so many, so many like out and about transphobes or chasers. So is Joe Rogan transphobic? I don't remember stuff he said about Joe it. Rogan made uh, like that's like one of his. You know how Joe Rogan has like a certain issues that he will not budge on at all. Like it was weed for the longest time, which is a good thing, obviously. And then uh, one of the one of the issues that he will not budge on is like trans athletes. But that oh yeah has that. opened the door up to so much transphobia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. You know, it's already, it's still a, a, a topic that is widely contested no matter what, no matter where you go, even though the main goal is not necessarily to, like, uh, instill fairness in sports or anything, and it's usually just to be transphobic, which is what we saw very quickly in all these states that started off by being, like, the one 12-year-old trans girl can't fucking go to the swim meet, very quickly <laughs> turned into, like, we will kill you if you offer, uh, you know, HRT to... Uh, to, to people over the age of 18, you know what I mean? Like, that was their all overarching goal always, right? So, uh, but yeah, Joe Joe has this take. Let, right. let's, let's take a look. Actually, let's take I'm a look. this is super interesting, but yeah, as you were touching on, there's been a number of transphobic conservatives who have found, have been found with trans porn open either in their browser. That happened with uh, Nick Fuentes. Yeah. That happened with uh, Alex, Alex Jones. Jones. So, I find that so interesting. Like, keep, you know, you can still be a woman, just keep your cock. Have yeah. you watched trans chick with dick porn? Because it's pretty great. Have I not watched it? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good because you get the dick and two women. Yeah, but then you're kind of whacking off to uh, somebody with a dick. Yeah, that's an oh, issue. Aren't like, you always? Uh -huh. You're watching a guy fucking no, girl? No, I'm not really. Watching I'm not it's really. the least gay of porn because you got exactly. a girl. Exactly. No, no. I'm girl saying with a cock fucking a girl. Bro, I'm not gay. Bro, you're way more gay than me, dude. I just don't. Bro, I don't look at dicks when I jerk off. You gay? We have to keep our country gay. <laughs> I, I just don't. <laughs> oh god, I love that. <laughs> but, but, I don't understand. Like, what? Who? I mean, I guess it's personal preference, but like, I don't know. I, 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 I need to see a dick in the porn. Like, that's my consumption. You know what I mean? Listen, I'm not talking about my porn habits here today. I'm not. I'm not as as bold as these guys Suck to uh, bring that to the table here, but. Like I, I need to, I need, I need that. So what do you, 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 I'm you so you. you're saying you don't like lesbian uh, porn? It's not my preference. You like want to see a dude I'll, have sex? Sometimes I'll watch it, but it's not my preference. Yeah, you want to see a dude have sex with, and and you're not, and that doesn't threaten your masculinity. To see a man naked. No, I'm just, I'm imagining myself in that situation. For example, when I jerk off Donnie. What about when Steve will do it? Jerks off Donnie. That is, I don't want to even think about that. Uh, Arcan Sus, uh, thank you for the 50 gifted from our Saudi benefactor, Arcan Sus. Thank you. Oh well, there my, it is. I can't control my goo. Isn't there certain states where trans porn is the highest rated? Um, uh, or at the top? I don't know if it's top in any states. There are some funny ones in those charts, but, uh, let me see. There is something really deeply pathological about people that hate trans people. What does it mean that you hate trans people, but you watch trans porn? You're a chaser. That's there. There's terminology for it. What you, is a chaser? Um, so chasers are people who fetishize and objectify trans people as like this exotic thing, and that objectification process obviously uh, robs the trans person of their humanity. So you're like specifically looking at them as an object of fascination, an object of desire, and I think because of uh, the transphobic nature of society. Uh, a, a lot of these people feel conflicted about their own personal uh, uh, want and their fetishization. So that's the reason why they're so outwardly anti-trans usually, I, I think. But there's, I feel like there's something more pathological going on there where it's like, it's like, uh, I think, here's, a, here's what I think. It's so much more commonly acceptable to be like, oh, women are on this scale of... Uh, bisexuality, right? Of homosexuality. And I think a lot of these dudes, I think it's the same for men to be on this uh, spectrum of sexuality. Yeah. And, and men are so afraid of, of admitting that, especially these macho dudes who probably want dick more than anyone. You know, Joe Rogan would take, that man wants a cock and, and, and that's fine, right? Like, you know, he likes muscles and big cocks. I mean, these guys, they love, and, and you know that more than anyone, right? So. Yeah, sexuality is on a <laughs> spectrum. And also on top of that, 
transphobia is at the intersection of many different forms of bigotry right. all the way from misogyny right all the way down to homophobia right so it's like um, the bermuda triangle so of that's precisely why yeah that's precisely why it's such a vector for hatred um especially uh, within people who yes yeah, so, you know who who don't want to recognize that like trans women are women which is ironic because when they're so justifying their porn consumption they literally do say it like the only time these dudes are like, nah, trans women are definitely women. Like, chill the fuck out. What are you talking about? Is when they're talking about their own personal porn consumption, where it's like, what do you mean? It's a chick with a cock. Like, whatever. That that would never extend in any other uh, meaningful capacity to to any other field. It's only when it touches them in in a way uh, or says something about them. They're like, well, no, nah, it's not gay, bro. Which it isn't. Technically, it isn't. Trans women are women. So you're watching lesbian porn, which is gay obviously um like gay in the in the umbrella term right what happened uh okay sorry so and i yeah what i think is happening is joe rogan is getting to express his his bisexual side guys like joe rogan they watch the trans porn and they get to express no because it no it's still straight to watch no. trans porn because they, it you're doesn't watching... matter the straight the gay it, it's like the whole point is stupid is stupid as fuck to even put that label on it but what's interesting is like he, I don't know. I feel like they're they're doing some kind of uh, weird uh, mind trick on themselves, where they can they can uh, enjoy their homosexual desires without having. But they can still deny. You know, there's something going on there. These men, they're pathologists. They just want to kiss a fucking dude. And I felt that no, uh, that, like that just basically. By the way, Mar me. so and, and as proof of that, it's really incredible. I didn't know trans um, was so popular. Trans porn. In Maryland, trans porn was number one. What the fuck, bro? In Maine, number one is fisting. <laughs> so, so this this uh, was from their the Pornhub. Uh, they release demographics every year, and this is actually specifically uh, relative search porn. So fisting. I think like this is terms search more often in each state when compared to all other states. So there's no. So it's not actually the top category, but it just means that compared to everywhere else, uh, Maryland is. That's the place to be for Vic Latina's for popping in Texas. I like, uh, <laughs> there's some weird ones in here. Mormon? Harley Quinn. Specifically Harley that Quinn. Is very specific. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Shout out, uh, anal cream pie. Love that. <laughs> Why are they looking up? Penis pump. That, <laughs> that's <laughs> an interesting, uh, that's uh, such a weird one. Lot. <laughs> Pantyhose. Giantess. Respect. The whole state. Thick. Thick Latina Texas, yee yeah, yee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love them thick Latinas. Foot job, New York. Hey, shout out C Man. Uh, yeah. Oh shit. C Man's shit. watching so much foot porn. He skewed the whole damn <laughs> he state. He skewed the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> oh, that's super interesting. Well, there it is. I, I think it's it's cute when you're searching dirty talk on Pornhub. Mm. I'll just I'll say it. That's very sweet. It's Wait, like it's like penis. the equivalent of typing boob into Google. <laughs> What's up with Idaho giantess? Yeah, giant respect. tits. No, no giant tits. Like, uh, like, like a... the vampire mommy from the latest Resident Evil franchise game. <laughs> giant right. tits. Yeah. Whoa. Like the, the female form of giant. Giant tits. Oh, a giant tits. Yeah. Big ass titties to just bury yourself in, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bitch who, who doesn't want that? Go spelunking in her vagina, eh? Uh, let's go. Respect. <laughs> anyway, so Joe Rogan uh, watches transform. That's super interesting to know. And further, we were talking about, uh, shit, what were we talking about? Yeah, Al, we got so sidetracked. Alex Jones watches trans porn. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Alex, Alex Jones, Jones was, should be watching his pocket. That's what he should be watching. Uh, yeah. That's well. a segue for you. Let's go. Let's get back to the main topic at hand here. Yeah, so Alex Jones, uh, in his second of three... Uh, defamation cases. Dogs. He's like the opposite of you in the in the American uh, court system. So far, <laughs> knock on wood. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know. But he just got a pl an order of a nine hundred and sixty five million, which is an amount that almost just makes you laugh. It's like okay, but there it is, a billion dollars. And am I right? So at first I was like, okay, well, there's got to be a punitive cap because in Connecticut, you looked it up. You said there's fifty thousand dollar cap on punitive damages. Well, so I Texas thought it's the same thing. He's on the hook for like four million in Texas, but it turns out after some anal analyzing, is, is this? I don't know if this is one hundred percent confirmed at the moment, but this is from the New York Times. So 
They ca- take, they take said, them out what you will. Okay, that's a reputable source, obviously, depending on who you ask. Right. The case presents the greatest financial... Not me. <laughs> <laughs> fake news, news media. Times. New York Times. Goddamn fake news media. The yeah. ca- they says the case presents the greatest financial risk to Mr. Jones because if he was found liable of violating uh, Connecticut's Unfair Trade Practice Act... Uh, by using lies about the shooting to sell products on InfoWars, there would be no cap on punitive damages <laughs> under that law. Did he really- there is no law that cooks Alex Jones more perfectly than this one, because that's literally his revenue model. Like, he, he'll be like, they're, they're turning the frogs gay, which is why I need to buy my uh, straws. Wait, that, what that- was he selling off Sandy Hook? What would like what products could he even like segue him off that? I don't know. Uh, you know, why two K supplements? The, the government's killing babies uh, on their own. You know, they're gonna kill. They're gonna kill your babies too. That's why I need to buy my my why two K supplement. <laughs> I don't know. That's I, such I, a I, specific I, I, law. It's really interesting. But yeah, apparently that prevents a cap, which means this man's on the hook for a full billion dollars. Let's go. I mean, that's like I'm sure there are ways to uh, get around this because there are so many different instances where like people with any kind of wealth have been able to evade uh you know OJ. duck responsibility and any kind of like punitive damages uh with basically what is a slap on the wrist right um i'm sure you could like shelter some of your assets if he hasn't done so already i'm sure he has uh and then and then get around it uh, they could garnish his wages. They could uh, liquidate all of his assets. He's fucked. Yeah, he's fucked. Um, but the goal, I think, ultimately is not to offer some kind of financial restitution to the victims, but it is to basically show the rest of the world that this is completely unacceptable, which it was. What Alex Jones did is insanely unacceptable. Yeah. And and that, uh, you know, people should be more careful about uh, creating mass hate campaigns against uh, against people that they've declared, uh, you know, villains with Especially, no Especially re- uh, people whose Darling. children were just uh, murdered. Not yeah. the best uh, target there, Alex. You think InfoWars is done? And I mean, there's still another one coming. The man is so fucked financially. Yeah. By the way, during the verdict, he, this man was live on his King. show fundraising as one of the parents of the slain children is crying i mean this is like i just he's fucking fundraising i just i can't like it's so strange because he's so telegenic he's so charismatic as like a pure entertainer but you cannot you cannot uh remove the the consequences of his actions from (laughs) from who the alex jones the entertainer is like as much as i want to as a longtime Alex Jones fan, originally, you know what I mean? As, as someone who was fascinated by his persona, uh, as, as someone who found him to be outright entertaining, it's impossible not to recognize the genuine harm he has caused in American society. Now, he's not single-handedly responsible for this. Obviously, the systems are, are at fault more than anything else. Um, but this is complete insanity. I love. This I mean, this clip. is this is such insanity that it it belongs in a movie, right? And yeah, I don't I mean like a Richard Linklater movie where uh, Alex Jones would be playing himself or a version of himself. I mean, like literally, this is this is crazy. No, Hacker this this is clip mad. is. I agree. It's totally nuts. Here it is. And from Remington, ain't gonna be happening. Ain't no money. Our verdict as to damages in this case, we award damages to each plaintiff and against Alex Jones and Free. I killed the kids, folks. I think. Number one, compensatory damages. Instructions. Fill in both numbers for each plaintiff, then go Now remember, I'm in bankruptcy. We got two years of appeals. The money you donate does not go to these people. It goes to fight this fraud, and it goes to stabilize the company. They want us shut down. That's why the the, 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 the ambulance chasers did this, why they use these families. So SaveInfoWars.com. We're fighting Goliath. We'll win because of you. SaveInfoWars.com. InfoWarsStore.com. He's literally... Double Patriot points, 10% off of 1776 Double right Patriot now points. At InfoWarsStore. But you see, you want somebody to fight for you? I'm doing it, and you see what they do. So you want we want to fight? That's fine. It's your decision. But that's it's, where we are. That's the whacked out system of the left. Did, did we hit a billion yet? In from Remington. Did we hit a million yet? Yeah, so by the way, pretty sure he's committing bankruptcy fraud right there on TV. You can't fundraise to save the business while you're bankrupting the business. 
I think the bankruptcy people are going to have a vested interest in where all this money goes. I love that he said those guys are ambulance chasers. Have you seen his lawyer, dude? He's got a double ponytail. He fucking literally on in the in the trial straight up said Alex Jones is a mad prophet and he is unstoppable. I mean, he's just oh god. Their lawyers are definitely not uh, ambulance chasers. The guy who finally sued him put it off for years and years and years until uh, Alex Jones fans had destroyed, eviscerated any semblance of life that he could possibly live, had absolutely tap dance on the grave. Yeah, that's, the, that's the his lawyer. Stunt. That's Alex Jones' lawyer. That's my lawyer, dog. I'm going to prison on a defamation trial. <laughs> He's, I mean, it, it's so gross. I mean, it's so evil and so fucking gross. But Alex Jones, in many cases, is just ungovernable, you know? Two for two on defaming the judge on the awards uh, declaration trial. Two for two. He did it in Texas. He defamed the judge while the proceedings were going on. He defamed the judge in Connecticut, too. He did. What did he say about them? I think he did the same thing with the laser eyes and shit. He didn't go as hard on the Connecticut judge, but he definitely went super hard on the Texas judge. Yeah, I don't I remember. It was crazy. <laughs> but uh, all the worst things to Alex Jones. I'm super excited to watch this guy's life uh, go down the drain. Wish nothing but the worst for him. And uh, I hope that uh, Infowars goes you know, offline forever. You know what's really interesting about this also is that I've always maintained the belief that like no one is truly a free speech absolutist with like, maybe some exceptions, right? Um and this is one of those perfect instances, right? Like, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater and, like, defamation does not fall under free speech. Right. And not only do we all know that, but this is a clear-cut instance of defamation um, with ongoing harassment that has occurred after that. But so many right-wing conservatives came out in defense of Alex Jones saying, like, the regime, the establishment wants to take him down for speaking truth to power or whatever, which is, by the way, <laughs> the like, power. what, dunking on the, the victims, yeah, what? the families of, like, Sandy Hook victims? Like, that's crazy. Um, but all of those people have personally, consistently been like, you have defamed me, good sir. I will be seeing you in court. Like, totally. they all have defamation tweets of their own. So they all obviously recognize it. Uh, that, that defamation does not fall under that super broad uh, uh, protection that free speech offers. Yeah, I mean, crazy every, stuff. everyone who's threatened to sue me or has sued me, I'm pretty sure is MAGA. I don't know about Matt Haas. I think he's MAGA, but I don't know. But, yeah, I mean... Yeah, they love that. They anyway, love, they that. love hitting people yeah. with defamation suits while so, simultaneously screaming that Alex Jones should have been protected. So uh, he's got one more trial coming up. Um, which state is that in? Do you know? Uh, no. I don't know. But I mean, he's already a billion down, so I mean, what what does it matter at this point? He's going to have a lot of creditors there, a lot of debtors. Uh, Mr. Jones has a third Sandy Hook damages trial pending... Uh, you lost to these two families. I don't know where it is, though. But anyway, so uh, Alex Jones, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on now to Kanye West, who's just come out as a straight-up anti-Semite. Yeah. Well, Ben Shapiro, ben Shapiro thinks otherwise. I mean, he did say it's anti-Semitic, what he said. Wait, did, yeah. But he even like cast a little bit of doubt on it while simultaneously saying that <laughs> Kanye West was saying anti-Semitic things like Death Con 3 on all Jews. <laughs> Insanity. Wait, it's anti-Semitic, I didn't, but... I didn't, but I didn't know Benny Boy was defending. He's not. He, he's not he really said, defending. He was defending the abortion stuff that he was talking about. He's like, well, you know, uh, bipolar disorder. He like went on an in-depth analysis on like bipolar disorder and how it, uh, you know, how that could be a factor in why he's saying anti-Semitic things, but certainly not a factor in, in what he's saying uh, otherwise, like all the other conservative stuff that he's mentioning. Um, he, he literally did the, well, you know, he's neurodivergent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I used to be like, man, he's just not well. And that, I mean, that, that I mean, takes, he's not. You know, he's not, but at a certain point you go, well, does being bipolar make you anti-Semitic? Does being bipolar make you hate Jews? Hmm. My beautiful, dark, that's twisted a fantasy. No, the, but being, being, being bipolar, bipolar will open you up to, you're more vulnerable to uh, probably outside influences that uh, that will take advantage of you and, you know, uh, put some books your way that uh, you, you do not have the, the mental fortitude to assess uh, adequately. Uh, and then you start believing some of the shit that you hear 
And then in a manic episode, you just blurt it all out because you are such a gigantic narcissist surrounded by sycophants that have pushed and you've pushed away everyone in your circles that could actually check you. So you just think uh, any kind of pushback against what you're saying is completely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And uh, you turn into this, to this behemoth. Ian, what are your thoughts on the Kanye West black Israelite narrative? He's not there. He's not there, but someone's switching. Ian, wow. go? <laughs> Ian. Ian's a huge Kanye fan. It's been a hard couple of years for him. Yeah. He I mean, maybe I, it's better I, to say like was. was. He was. He was. He, he was. was he actually point. wrote a screenplay about. Uh, <laughs> no Kanye's way. Life. No, he was in. Deep. I, look, I, I like Kanye West. His graduation is great. Like, I, I, I like, <laughs> I like his music. In the words of Kanye West himself, you know, I like Kanye West's music. What the fuck does he know about politics? Okay. <laughs> You know, it, it's just, it's obvious. And by the way, I, I've actually talked about this a little bit more in depth in the past. I didn't have the liberty to discuss such things at, at, at the time because I didn't want to like out any of my friends. But like, I knew that his trip to Uganda was like a very uh, tumultuous and, and, and almost like a turning, represented a turning point uh, in his experience overall. Because I, I had heard that he was uh, getting really into the black Israelite stuff mm -hmm. and even saying things that were anti-Semitic in nature in, in private. Um, and then it came out that even in 2018, when he had that uh, conversation with uh, Harvey Levin at TMZ, that he had actually said some things about Hitler he and the a Jews. Shout out, yeah, he gave a shout out to Adolf Hitler. Yeah, he's a go. shout out to Hitler. Yeah, big ups. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's go Hitler through. We've got, we've basically oh, got it all charted out. But all right, where, like, where does like the Alex latest Jones, part of the saga start? Like Alex Jones, you know, he's causing a lot of harm, uh, and and you know, but so let's say. Um, Kanye, let's see, f this whole saga started out at Paris, Paris Fashion Week. He was wearing a White Lives Matter shirt, uh, outside Candace Owen. Ben Shapiro employee, Candace Owen. Yeah. And here is that. So this obviously caused quite a stir for, uh, obvious reasons. And... <sighs> And then his reaction to that was, if anyone asked me, like, why I'm wearing a White Lives Matter shirt, it's because they do. You know? Yeah, cool, dude. Nobody said they don't. But I've already, I mean, we've already talked about this a billion times. It's literally mm -hmm. just provocative. Uh, you P, ain't got the answer, Sway! And then P. Diddy apparently reached out to Kanye, trying to talk to him about all this, and Kanye flipped on him, said he was being controlled by Jews, and posted screenshots of their text. This was very interesting to see. The Jews. So here, let's see. So this is a text that Kanye sent Puff Daddy. I don't like our combo. I'm selling these tees. Nobody. So is he selling White Lives Matter tees? I guess. I mean, it's pretty. I don't think he has yet. Pretty but shitty I think merch, bro. Say, saying that he will. I mean, yeah. It's not that. I mean, you know. It's kind of shit you buy off of, you know, hog.com where we got all of our little MAGA shirts. It's not that fashion forward, just saying. Message aside. He says, I'm selling these tees. Nobody gets it between me and my money. This is my grandfather texting you now. Never call me with no bullshit like that again unless you're ready to green light me. Because nobody who got on that tee. Because anybody who got on that tee is me. Uh, out of respect for everything you've meant to me, I'll be quiet as Virgil. But no, now I know how I've hurt people I love with threats. Come do something illegal to me now, please. Yeah, so he posted that. He said, God is love. My brother misspoke to me, but I still love him. The thing that drives me crazy is how many enablers Kanye has. But okay, he's so popular. What do you expect? Yeah. Uh, it continues. You want to go ahead? This uh, Diddy says, I'm just trying to talk to you as a black man. And I'm talking to you because this is hurting our people. Stop. He said, anything you text, I will post. I love you, and you guys are breaking my heart. I accept your apology in advance. He said, God, God is love. And then Diddy said, N-word, send me an address. <laughs> Let's stop playing these internet games, and, and don't feel threatened. You'll be fine. Just love. He said, this ain't a game. I'm going to use you as an example to show the Jewish people that told you to call me that no one can threaten or influence me. I told you this was war. Now go and get you some business. Uh, so he, he's implying there that uh, Diddy is controlled by Jews, as you know, and the, and and you know, 
and the Jews are making him do this. Yes. Now, there's two separate sides to this, though, because he will, it, underneath this, in the caption, what does he say if you scroll down? He says, there's, Jesus is Jew. And then there are instances where he has said, like, black people are the real Jews. Uh, but you know what I say about this? What? You can be the Jew, bro. Be the Jew. I, I, I don't care. You know what I mean? Okay. Listen, I don't want to deal with this shit. You're, you're take, washing your take, hands. Take it. Be the Jew. What the fuck do I care? I don't need this. Okay. I you're, was you're born washing into your, this life. I didn't ask for it. You're washing I don't your care hands about this. any of this shit. Be the Jew, Kanye. You want to be the be Jew so bad? Take it, bro. <laughs> you want to see what it's like? It's not that fucking dope, bro. Whatever you think it is, just go. Be it. Enjoy it, man. Take it from me. I'm not trying to do any shit to you, bro. Ethan said, have fun with IBS. <laughs> 1,000, one bro. The Tourette's. <laughs> You want, to have, you want to have tummy aches every time you eat frozen pizza, Kanye? Take that shit. You want that? Go with God. Neurosis. <laughs> uh, so he sa he continues on uh, here. Did he say, as soon as I land, we'll meet face to face, send me an address. He said, N-word, fuck you, you fed. The N-word. I got to say, Puff is kind of a badass. Well, I mean, yeah, he's may or may not have killed people, allegedly. Puffy? So. Big Puff Daddy? That makes it's been a long you don't time know rumor that he was involved in the death of uh, Tupac. And yeah, you don't know the Tupac? What the I Lord? thought that was all uh, uh, some other dude. In there was, there was like someone who claimed that it was Diddy. Nah, Diddy would never do that. Diddy's a good man. <laughs> he is. He's no a good man. Is he? Well, you know that's that? That's interesting. Okay. Uh, Diddy's a good man. You follow him on Instagram, he's got vibes, bro. He I does have vibes for sure. Diddy. <laughs> um, true. Anyway. So all of this happened. But I love how he goes, send me your dress, dude. You'll be fine. Well, I don't think he was going to kill him. I no, think he was just trying to have a conversation with him face to face and be like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? You're out of your mind. Yeah. Because like in certain instances, when someone's going through like a manic episode, one of the best things you could do is pay, you know, try to maybe reason with them face to face. Because over the internet, it just, uh, or over text messages, it just doesn't have that same impact. You know? Yeah, so, but I think the standout thing was just about the, he's being controlled by Jews, which, of course, is one of the great anti-Semitic tropes yes. uh, of, of our day. And so I think he got um, suspended on Instagram after that one. And then, of course... Uh, which is, of course, a bullshit. Right. I mean, come on. Come on. Well, it's, it's free speech, baby. Well, Mark you Zuckerberg. Thought, I thought you... I'll tell you who... You. Just saying. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> His, his that is unironically what the Nazis say, by the way, for right. the record. Yeah. Um, totally. Actually, absolutely. there is a really funny thing he tweeted out after he got banned. Oh, yeah, on, on Twitter, you mean? With, I, with the I did photos laugh. of them doing karaoke? Yeah, he's like, we I should be dogs. Yeah. How could you ban me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you fuck with the Jews, brother. Yeah, so he did that, and then uh, and then he went on Tucker Carlson. Yeah, so I, that's the, that's my favorite thing. He gets banned for being anti-Semitic on Instagram, and, and then Tucker's stage, like, "Let's talk. Yeah, and let's so, do this." So everyone is like riding him now. All the conservatives are like, "Kanye West is prolific, brilliant." You know, everyone that literally said rap music is not real music. This right. Everyone that has made a career shitting on black people as a whole, all of a sudden are yeah. big Kanye stands. They, mm -hmm. uh, they came out and they're like, oh man, I love Kanye. Always love Kanye. Yeah, always been a big fan. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, Trump, so, you know what? George Bush does hate black people. Yeah, so he, so he goes on Tucker Carlson. They have insane conversations that are basically very Trumpian. Uh, you know, talking about like all these media people that I, I love imagining 70 year olds from Arkansas uh, watching and not comprehending. They're like, Who, what? He, he was denied the cover of Vogue. What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Stuff That's like that. Outrageous. Yeah. Also, he looks like he's in a Sith. I do like arc. the beard. I really but thought Beardier. Super dark. And I, like I, I thought Beardier was going to be different because he, he looks cool. He looked. You like it? I, I do I think agree. I think it's cool. a good look for him. His it eyes is a good look. Evil. You would say that. Yeah. The Jew in me. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm talking about. No, <laughs> I was talking about him talking. I was talking yeah, about the beard. Gone. Me saying that it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Beard solidarity. Is still on. So here's Tucker. Yeah. As soon as someone gets banned on social media for being racist or anti Semitic, Tucker's like, come on this show. I want to advocate for you. From it. And there's a photograph on it. What is that? It's a photograph of a baby's ultrasound. Why is that? And that you designed that? Yes. Why? What does that mean? 
Uh, it just represents life and pro-life. Boy, so you wear it on a badge. What, what kind of response do you get? And, and good, amen, I agree. I don't care about people's responses. I care about the fact that there's more black babies being aborted than born in New York City. That can't be true, can it? There's no fucking, I heard that, I was like, there's no shot. There's more abortions than births in New I don't York know. City of, by, of black babies. Not that it matters one way or the other. Because they're about, not babies. They're, it's an abortion. It just seems like it can't be true. So, um, I mean, he's, he's tarnishing his own legacy as, as uh, you know, an important uh, artist in this space. But that's whatever. Uh, but also, he's doing it in the worst way imaginable, where he's he's writing for some of the worst ideas, and it's corny as fuck too. On top of everything else, um, you know, at least Michael Jordan was like conservatives buy shoes too, but he didn't go balls to the wall on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He wasn't like he wasn't talking about like the Great Replacement or some shit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's just bit, he's just really whored himself out to white supremacists. It's kind of interesting, really. Yeah, um, there's turns out there's more to it though. The a lot of the parts of this interview that were especially crazy were cut out, including, including but not limited to, uh, Kanye West talking about how uh, you know black people are the real Jews. Uh, from this Tucker Carlson interview, which is interesting. I wonder why they cut that out. I mean, Tucker Carlson said he's a free speech guy, but... A apparently, they also... Not apparently, they did also cut out him saying hey, he's vaccinated. Yeah, that was weird as well. Yeah, he did say that he was vaccinated. <laughs> uh, they cut out certain parts where he's talking about, uh, you know, there's these actors in his house that are around his children, um, and, and he doesn't know where the, these actors came from. <laughs> I mean, paranoid hallucinations are a part of, uh, I think, a part of, like, manic breakdowns uh, oftentimes. But, you know, conservatives do love uh, someone going through an episode as long as they can weaponize it for their cause. So that's not, that's not new or surprising or unique to, to Kanye West. By the way, what I'm seeing is in 2019, there was more births of black babies than abortions. Yeah, according to this Newsweek article, because they fact-checked all this, they said uh, that was the case in 2019, which I'm assuming is the most recent data that's available. Newsweek also checked previous year's data and found that more black women gave birth than had terminations in 2017 and 18. Uh, but in 2016, there were slightly more uh, abortions than births uh, amongst black women. So, that is I mean, it... It did happen at one point, so it's but not that, that is far fetched of a claim. It's not completely yeah, far fetched. Yeah, yeah. At this point, that 50% of black death in America <laughs> is abortion. So I really don't care about people's responses. I perform for an audience of one, and that's God. <laughs> yeah. God. Out, out, bro. They love that. <laughs> Conservatives love that one. So they're, they're championing him, and then it comes out that he has said a lot more. And then he also tweets that he was going to go DEFCON, Deathcon 3 on uh, Jews <laughs> yeah, well, here, on I, Twitter, I, I, which gets him suspended off Twitter. I've got the whole timeline here uh, with yeah. clips. Kanye, this so basically they aired the PG version. This is, I don't know how this stuff leaked, but. This one was so funny. Here's shit that they cut that later got leaked to Vice. <laughs> here he is saying he, just watch, bro. I, yeah, yeah that, this one's. Yeah. <laughs> was biting my tongue on my political opinion because I thought it would be better for my children. And now you look up and my kids are going to a school that teaches black kids a complicated Kwanzaa. I prefer my kids knew Hanukkah than Kwanzaa. At least it will come with some financial engineering. <laughs> Kwanzaa doesn't, you know, so... <laughs> that's Trump. He that's almost, literally Trump. He almost did I have the, the, the fussy to uh, I have heard Trump say identical shit. You know, he'll go to, like, a, like an American Jews uh, fundraiser, right? Like, like uh, American Jews for Israeli Freedom fundraiser or whatever the fuck. And he'll be like, you know, you guys are so good with money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, so, so many lawyers in the room. Where are my lawyers at? <laughs> right. I love my Jew lawyers. <laughs> what does he mean, though? Like, the, because there's, like, I guess... Traditionally in Hanukkah, you play with like 
Uh, what? No. Why are you? Coins? No. Why are you? There's literally you're trying to rationalize it. Well, too no, much, you're yeah. trying to. You're he trying to look just, further. No, he's just saying Jews are good with money. So, so by celebrating Hanukkah, his kids will be better with money. Yeah. No, Unlike that's Kwanzaa, what the broke ass lame old religion. <laughs> I don't know yeah. anything about Kwanzaa for the record. But. Yeah. Well, you didn't go to the schools that Kanye's children went to. That's but why. Han- but still, he makes it very clear that Hanukkah is also a bullshit. I uh, I went holiday. to the school where his kids go. What, what did, you did? Yeah, I went to Sear Cannon. Did you learn about um, Wanta? <laughs> we you? did actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair wow, enough. that explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> did you learn about Hanukkah? We did. We learned about Christmas. So we, so you know, so okay. I mean, I might have changed from when I was there. Seems like he just wants to to lessen the cur- the curriculum. There. Yeah, but right. that's but that's the funny that's the the funnier uh, kind of uh, bigotry where he's like. You know, the Jews control the banking institutions, but they're doing a good job. They're They're doing doing a good job with it. (laughs) Just don't piss them off, though. Just don't don't make them angry. (laughs) So, yeah, he he said that, um, which is, again, another anti-Semitic trope. Uh, Yeah, I mean, when you look at Hitler's rationale for, like, the final solution, it all ties back to these high-level insane Jewish conspiracies, you know, and this stuff all feeds into that. When yeah. you're willing to accept that Jews as a minority group have this ungodly amount of influence or coordinated influence over all these huge walks of life. And the, the rant and about then, Planned Parenthood here, which is the third one on the docket, uh, that one is where he, like, says black people are the real Jews. Mm-hmm. Uh, which Go is, for it, bro. Take it. Uh, you want to pull that? Well, let's watch this one. I got this one up right. Oh, uh, the energy communities. Yeah, yeah. yeah this this one. one's just crazy. This one, uh, I don't know why they cut it. I think they, 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 people would really jive with this. I'll talk to him if I see him. Yep. But I guarantee you, he see me. And he's talking about Obama I have there. Visions that God gives me, Obama. just over and over on community building and how to build these free energy, energy. kinetic fully kinetic energy communities where we impress, we, we put the least impression on the earth. We're not building the, the new New York skyline cockfight that we are humble in the way that we present ourselves. We've got to rethink who we are as a species. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tucker's right on board with you there. Oh, um, but sure, for sure. Tucker Carlson had like a like a raw egg Planned nationalist Canada or something made. the other day on his broadcast where like <laughs> he loves that shit. That Tucker also famously an advocate for ball tanning. Right. right. Actual ball tanning and the return yeah. of masculinity. Stuff he's, like a, that. he's he's big into that like self-help, you know, goop for white nationalist males uh, adjacent. I wonder if Tucker Brit. would put a jade egg up his ass. Yeah. You told him it gave him more testosterone, you probably would. So there was that, and then this is the Here's the one, yeah, the real Jews comment. Let's see. Planned Parenthood was made by Margaret Sanger, a known eugenics with the KKK, to control the Jew population. When I say (laughs) Jew, I mean the 12 lost tribes of Judah, the blood of Christ, who the race, the people known as the race black, Really are. You know what's crazy about how they're using Kanye as like a useful idiot? You know the moment he left, Tucker was like, that guy's fucking insane. Oh, yeah. What a lunatic. And then they air it like, hey, look at this guy. We love Kanye. He's the best. Yeah, that's why they cut out the parts where he's going, exactly. you know, bananas that, mode. That's literally what it means. Yeah. Tucker fucking hates Kanye. He thinks he's a freak. Well, yeah, Tucker doesn't, he's not too fond of black people in general unless he can use them as a, as a token to weaponize sometimes against the black community and uh, sometimes against everyone else. Anyone, yeah, anyone. People known as the race black really are. This is who our people are, the blood of Christ. This, as a Christian, is my belief. And I believe that if we saw ourselves as more... Yeah, so what is the, I don't understand this whole uh, it's, it's black a, or the real Jew thing. It's a black Israelite yeah. theory. Uh, yeah. So uh, they claim that like uh, all the white Jews, like all the other Jews are, are actually fake Jews and they are the real Jews. So They also have some really cool ideas yeah. like Shakespeare was black. Uh, right on. Uh, Cleopatra, not black. Uh, but uh, who else is black? Like Mozart, Beethoven, black. Oh, sick. 
Yeah. Most part um, definitely wasn't black. How dare you say that? <laughs> I'm sorry, but that dude. Um, but I mean, they got they got crazy drip. They dress up like Mortal Kombat characters, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Like German or Austrian or some shit. Yeah, but black. But how does regardless. that make? Where is that? How does that? Well, I mean, it comes. Look, the lore? if you want to dive deeper into it, it comes from you know generational trauma and and trying to. Uh, instead of address that the psychic damage that causes an entire community of people, 400 years of slavery is nothing to just cast aside. Uh, no matter how much uh, you know, white supremacists try to do that, uh, it's 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 a, a group of people that want to not face that reality and and uh, you know make material restitution or fight for material restitution, but instead uh, you know look for alternative uh, history building so that that never actually happened in your mind. So. So how is it anti-Semitic? They say that Jews, modern-day Jews, are impo- like intentionally misleading. Yeah. Like I know I'm not the real Jew. Like someone like me is in on this. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, not that you're the expert. I don't know. I'm just trying to no, understand. No, I mean, it, it, I, I know a little bit, but like, am I in their I in their head? Am I in on this conspiracy? Someone like me, who's like just totally a, a, every every you know. Jewish person, like every Jewish person is is. Uh, I guess secretly in on it. I mean, it's always the same with Jews, right? That's it's like every every conspiracy theory ultimately needs a villain because it's it's <laughs> completely and you know what, removed man? from materialist analysis. So they have to find like a nefarious reason as to why people do these why? kinds of things in a shadowy room, right? And and that's the reason why since the blood libel days, since the original sin, since all of that, even before that, really, uh, that uh, a group of individuals were held responsible for no reason, uh, uh, and, and that group of individuals has always been Jews, right? Dude, every good conspiracy theory blames the Jews. Yeah, even fucking what, innocuous, deal, like, flat earther conspiracy theories the go The Jews made to, Earth flat? Yeah, NASA is, like, controlled by Jews. Like, it, it, every, every <laughs> conspiracy the theory That's what I'm saying. Kanye, be the Jew, bro. I don't want to be the Jew. You yeah. be the Jew. What the fuck? I don't want to deal with this shit. I, so, I'd love to be just be, like, a fucking... Normal dude, you don't have to talk about me being Jewish. Yeah, Jews did 9 11, all that fun stuff. Le- bro, just leave me alone. You do all that shit, man. Take yeah. it, please, with my blessings. You're the black Israelite. God bless, man. I'm so, bowing out. You're right. You're right. So he's saying that. Um, but I'm bowing like, out. But black Israelites, for the most part, are just like. They're annoying. You know what I mean? They just don't. They don't really have any sort of uh, genuine power in any meaningful capacity. They're just like kind of the dudes that. You see at the subway station, uh, looking like Mortal Kombat characters, yelling at everybody <laughs> exactly. okay, about how they're like fake Jews and stuff, right? Um, <coughs> so, I, I mean, I, I find it interesting, partially because it's like uh, it, it doesn't have any sort of like systemic harm that it is capable of causing, um, even though Black Israelites are responsible for uh, some hate crimes against like Jewish schools and whatnot. There was one case in New Jersey and one in New York where there was uh, an anti-Semitic attack that occurred. One at a Jewish deli, I believe, and one at a school, if I'm not mistaken. Not a mistaken. deli, man. Yeah, oh, that's they, way more sacred. That's a place than, of worship. I was going to say, animal. that's more sacred than the synagogue. You fucking beast, you yeah. animal. Yeah, so so that has happened in the past as well. But other than that, like other than... Uh, 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 individual acts of, of uh, individual acts of anti-Semitic violence, there is no like broader systemic structure that it hinges on because it's uh, it's a small group of people that uh, do not have any sort of uh, legitimate power. There's no like secret. There's no there's no societal development that is built upon. Uh, I'm ready you know, to black uh, black Hebrew Israelite conspiracy theories in the Listen. same way that like white supremacy has been built upon. I'm ready to hand off of the America. baton. If they need a ceremony, if we need to make this official, I don't know what they want. If there's any black Israelites watching, I can pass off the credentials. You want me to hand you a Torah or something? You're right, bro. Take it. I don't want it. Can I give, can I, one Jew, give another black Israelite my Jew? Like, I Jew make you Jew. Now, me no Jew. I don't think it works that way. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to report. I just, I don't want it. Get together in a, yeah. Get together in one of the meetings, <laughs> and you can discuss oh, it shit, I guess with I the did. elder I, counselor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, being, being a Jew is fucking annoying 99% of the time. It's like, why y'all fucking care so much? It's just like... The, everybody, every story needs a villain. 
And historically, uh, it's always been Jews. Like, unjustifiably, of course. Uh, but it, 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 it's just, uh, it's an old trope that they like to, to go back to. They get comfort from it, I guess. Yeah, old comfortable anti-Semitism. Yeah. So, like being home. Uh, here is more anti-Semitic What shit. our culture is based on. Think about us judging each other on how white we could talk or be like, you know, a Jewish person judging another Jewish person on how good they danced or something. I mean, that's probably like a bad, uh, is that when people going to get mad at that shit? But <laughs> uh, that was a weird one. Uh, another thing that they do. I, it, uh, I was going to ask what you guys of, think. Like, is the implication like Jewish people are bad at dancing? I have no judge, idea, dude. Or like they shouldn't be dancing at all? Like, he, he's talking about black know. people code, code switching in order as a right. mechanism of survival in a, in a white supremacist society. And then he turns around and he's like, and Jews can't dance. <laughs> right. No more dancing fuck? at bar mitzvahs, man. Yeah, I don't no know more. why. Maybe Yo, he say saw what those... the fuck you want about Jews, but those guys those guys shred man yeah i was about to say like maybe he saw maybe he saw the fucking the the like the hasidic uh uh, uh jews getting down at bar mitzvahs and shit to to walk a flogger you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah 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 or just, oh, they like, do the mashup crazy yep Flock I, um <laughs> here let's continue on i probably want to edit that out in front of that like that uh, and then, and then, and then. i like that okay. that was like that's a <laughs> that yeah. was Cross okay, edit out the Jews. Jews are actually dope at dancing. Yeah, they, they, they dance fine. Yeah, yeah. He, he corrected himself. Because, yeah, the logic there would, like, By the he's way. equating it to, like you said, code switching. So it's like a Jew dancing is a Jew code switching to being not Jewish. It's very strange. Bitch, Kanye, watch your mouth, bitch. I wish you play the music for, like, one sec when it shows. It's a party, it's a party, your it's a party. Mouth, hey, it's a party, it's a party. Yo, Jews party. fucking dance so hard <laughs> that there's that video in Israel where they literally they burst through the floor. The second <laughs> yeah. story building and like yeah, 70 going people. crazy died. with it. Yeah, man. That's how we do it. Maybe he saw that. Live fast, die hard, you know what I mean? Check this out. Yo, Kanye be talking mad shit. Where are you at now, bitch? Where are you at? You ain't here, Kanye. You ain't on this level, bitch. Put that fucking... Uh, put that, that drip goes crazy. Ne next up, next merch for Kanye. Kanye should just do Black Israelite merch, honestly. Yeah, I mean, he's not that far off at this point. Yo, doing that tip... Dude, put that little middle foot in, take that metal foot out. Shut up, dude. Doing well, they a, got they pokey the hokey pokey up in this. <laughs> we call yeah. it the, the gefilte pokey. <laughs> yeah. This is basically like a high-level dosi, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see it. Yeah. Eat your words, bitch. Anyway. Um, More. Okay. So, you know, I was talking to Ice Cube today, and we got really beat up in 2020 for saying we need to approach things a different way and not just be trauma drunk. Right. Which is a term that I, you know, God just hit me with in the past couple of days. We are no longer trauma drunk. We are no longer trauma drunk and we're no longer trauma bonding and we're no longer woke in the sense of what woke is because woke is just complaining about <laughs> racism but not doing anything about it. So what that's, you that's a really interesting yeah, take. Yeah. Like, Woke is complaining about racism and not really horrible. doing anything about it, but also like, you know who complains the most? Motherfuckers who say white lives matter. At least people who say black lives matter have like a legitimate cause, a, a legitimate movement. The organization itself might Listen. be uh, a, a completely fraudulent, right? But it's a real thing that uh, that people are genuinely upset by. It's uh, a, a, a white supremacist criminal justice system uh, and and Kanye West is like, yeah, you guys aren't doing anything about it. So I decided to go and use the counter movement that white supremacists came up with mm -hmm. uh, and, and ride that. Dude, you're a billionaire. One of the f you're in a position to do something about it. And what are you doing about it? You're telling other people to stop whining. Like, fuck you. Dude, such a useful idiot you've become. What we're going to do about it is say, hey, you know what? Y'all not gonna send nobody at me. What do we do about it? Based on my opinion. You asked the question before, 
It drove me crazy to not be able to say that I like Trump. I think you said it a that, lot. That's frequently. perfect. No, but that that personally kind of showcases where this like reactionary rhetoric comes from, though. A guy who has never been told you know, no for a very long day. time, who can, who does not know how to handle it, getting told no at uh, you know at this large, this wide enough scale, looking desperately for any kind of ally that will take him and say no, what you're doing is right, keep going, Kanye. And just, uh, you know, going off on crazy tangents. Mm -hmm. He's basically stating it. There is no interpretation. There's no analysis. There's no, like, genuine political interest in any of the movements that he's, like, uh, signing off on or criticizing, really. It's just how it impacted him, how it impacted Kanye West. It drove him crazy uh, that he couldn't say he loves Trump. Uh, you know, it's it's a perfect, uh, uh, it's a, it's a, perfect powder keg of of narcissism bipolar disorder and uh, and and just being like a petulant little child uh when people tell you no you're like no i have to keep going i have to be more contrarian right uh this is what my favorite cut personally uh ask yourself why did they cut this i don't know you know every day we've been killing each other <coughs> in the streets <coughs> every day one of the amazing things with uh, Mayor Suarez is the, the murder rate has gone down. And yeah, I don't, I mean, you set that question up. You have more information about the, uh, about the, uh, about what happened in the hospitals. So in all honesty, I don't, I don't have the, mo the, the most facts, that, as many facts. No, I mean, in your life, like so the, co the COVID vaccine, the being stuck inside, like, what did you think of all that? I was, I was vaccinated. It was. <laughs> they cut this shit because it's so, they want them to be as palatable as they can yeah. to their white premises <laughs> audience. And at the same time, with open disdain for actually who Kanye is by, by cutting out uh, his comments. Uh, because they know he's he's crazy. Yeah, last night he was at the uh, the 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 red carpet with the uh, Kid Rock, Ray J, for the Candace Owens like documentary, yeah. The Big Lie or something. Yeah, I got that coming up in here. <sighs> but anyway, the, he said, here. "Yeah, this was the this was the fire tweet." Yeah, this one set it off. He says, "I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I love that I'm gonna be going DefCon three. Un all caps Jewish people in like eight spaces in between. Wait, two. hold the fucking phone, bro. That was on the eighth. The ninth was Ju was DeathCon three Jewish Day. What are, did he ever go DeathCon? No, because because fake Twitter suspended him before oh, he could go I DeathCon kinda, so three. Far, I kind of wanted to see where Thank it would you. go. Thank you. I wanted so bad. Uh, I wanted to know what he uh, he had to say. Well, put, so bad. But he's a coward. Put it on a website. People will see it. You know what I mean? Go to Rumble. Whatever the fuck. Yeah, no, I think he like he's being literally a coward. got a parlor account or something. No, well, you know, I woke up on I I may he may have gone Deathcon 3 on me because I woke up the next day super sick out of nowhere. <laughs> they activated the kill grid. Shit. <laughs> and he says the funny thing is the I 5G can't kill be grid has been flipped on. Because black people are actually Jew also. Yeah, of actually Jew. You guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. Again, I think, bro. I think you also tried to say, like, who created cancel culture, like, implying lightly that it was the Jews, maybe? <coughs> yeah, that was definitely. I mean, the Jews have been the first people to be canceled, let's be real. Yeah, if anything, they you know what I mean? canceled more than anybody else. Shit. Uh, but yeah, Candace Owens had a wonderful three-minute defense of this where she said uh, some, some cool things that I'll be paraphrasing, like, what does Death Con mean? Maybe he meant uh, he wanted to defend the all Jewish people because DEF CON is technically about defense. I've got um, that here if you want to watch the video. No, let's watch it. It's, it's really good. Uh, after this tweet, as you touched on, the TMZ guy, uh, Van Lathan. Uh, Lathan, said on his podcast that during that great TMZ, that guy, I watched, go back and watch that clip. He was, he absolutely eviscerated Kanye. It was really something. Yeah. But he said something to the effect of, I love Hitler, I love Nazis, that they cut out. Uh, shame they cut that out. That would have been a great soundbite. But uh, here is uh, Ian. Oh, can I say this, Ian? Can I share this? Yeah. So Ian says this is why he's no longer associating with Kanye fandom. 
Uh, I'm pretty certain these are different sentences. He's questioning how the reason for the IG ban is him being anti-Semitic. He was literally on interview praising Jews on Fox just two days ago. What? No. <laughs> hey, I, I saw this a couple times where people were trying to be like, no, he's saying, I'm going to wake up and go death con three. Anyways, on Jewish people? Right. Anyways, on Jewish people, like a separate... It's a, it's a new chapter. That's wow. the title of the next the, chapter. The, of, the man, <laughs> it's just funny because Kanye is trying people. to be like, no, I hate Jewish people. I want you all to know. I'm going to speak my truth in my heart right now. I hate Jewish people. <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 no. See, the <laughs> that's not what he means. Crazy was what he means. Jews. Well, that's basically what Candace Owens did, literally. Yeah. <laughs> and like, Death Con 3, he's probably trying to defend the Jews. If anything, oh, no. Uh, she also said, if anything, he's asking questions and trying to drive discourse, right? And it's like, yeah, <laughs> she was basically like a Jewish question. <laughs> uh, if anything, that's a question. Let's talk about that it. That deserves answers. You know, let's talk about it. It's yeah, just a conversation. Final solution, what do I we mean, do about it? Final solution? What if the solution is uh, that, uh, you know, we, we praise uh, uh, Jewish people? How about that? That was the final solution. That's actually. the solution. Mm -hmm. Thank them. Uh, for their... Not shocking coming from, of course, uh, Candace uh, Hitler wanted to make Germany great, uh, Owens. <laughs> Hitler was MAGA. Yeah, she did say, she did say that. Um, There's a bit of that Hitler was fun. in everyone. Um, uh, Ian, I'm not trying to do shtick here. I'm just genuinely curious. What is the Kanye community like these days? Or like, I remember you went on that Kanye podcast where those guys were like super hardcore. Do you, yeah. Do you know anything about like the state of his community right now? Uh, yeah, those guys are fully Conanon, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Conanon. Yeah. yeah. Really? Um, they're still in it. Yeah. A lot of defense. They responded to, uh, the thing about him saying that he loves Hitler being like yeah. Kanye was at the time he was saying he loves everyone. He was trying to pre uh, preach this, like, love your neighbor. Universal love. Thing. <laughs> love Hitler. And they're, they're on Twitter That's awesome. actively doing this even now. What about Defcon 3 on Jewish people? <laughs> Just that it was wrong syntax. Bro, if they're fucking defending Kanye saying he loves Hitler, I'm pretty sure the DEF CON... I love yeah, that didn't Google bother him. It's like much easier to defend than that. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's just funny that they're, they're not on board with it. They're just, they're so desperate. He's like, bro, yo, I want y'all to know right now, I hate Jewish people. <laughs> like, how yeah. much more clear can I make it? It's awesome. Uh, yeah. There, I think it, a lot of his fans are kind of out. But there's still a bunch of diehards in there, and it's kind of embarrassing the way that they have to try and spin it. Like, it's okay. You don't have to agree with everything he does. It's right. Weird. They separate the art from the artist. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, um, oh, is this a post on uh, the Kanye subreddit? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's definitely internal drama in the Kanye made. subreddit. But apparently, uh, what is it? The West Ever? West Sub Ever, it's yeah, called. Yeah, West Sub Ever is the the one that's like dick riding him super hard. Oh my god, it's yeah, so embarrassing. Oh, Candace Owens also said, uh, "Fuck." In her defense, she also said something along the lines of like, "Well, it's not like Kanye is is you know trying to directly kill Jewish people, like not directly. Like <laughs> she literally, she uh -huh. she literally made it seem like the only time you could be anti-Semitic is if you're quite literally Put doing a, the holocaust yeah. <laughs> if you're not putting a gun to jewish people's heads and pulling a trigger how can you be anti-semitic which by the way is the very bar. famously the same thing that white supremacists say about like racist people they're like oh well he didn't literally say the n-word or if he did say the n-word uh you know well uh, what if he meant it like uh you know when you're reading tom sawyer like it, there's always a defense for it. i'm using the n-word in like the scholarly way yeah uh, Using the N-word, but I'm not lynching anyone. Yeah, that, I mean, that's uh, that's usually the, the argument. It's the nuclear So Candace word. Owen, uh, his new bestie, they go around with their white lives matter shirts. Uh, apparently Kanye was asked to leave Chase Bank, which I kind of, I find that kind of funny. They just closed his account. That is insane. That's a Jewish conspiracy. That, actually. that is, okay. Well, yeah, so I, <laughs> but that is insane. I have some like, more info about that. <laughs> like what actually. the fuck? Banks work with fucking drug yeah, traffickers what, and shit. What? what the fuck? Okay. What's the intel? Yeah. Apparently he had been trying to terminate his relationship with that bank <coughs> for the last few months. Okay. Um, had even talked about that publicly. And we didn't cover it in it, but apparently in when he was popping off about everybody, he um, he was like also calling out specific uh, employees at the bank um, as part of like his rants and like, uh, you know, higher ups in the bank. And they were like getting threats from his fans and stuff. Uh, so they were like, you know what? We're out. 
So it's not so a Jewish it, conspiracy? It, I mean, the timing is unfortunate because, yeah, uh, a guy saying, hey, Jews uh, control the world, and then a, a bank <laughs> dropping I'm pretty him sure this is not a great look. Jewish too. Yeah, probably. Or we'll find fact check that, maybe. Uh, let's see, it's J.P. Well, Morgan, Chase, put it Can Candace CEO. thinks it's a Jewish conspiracy, I think, because she's like, there's no reason, there's no way that this would happen. All of a sudden, by the way, in their in their Oh, no, he's Greek. Oh, he's Greek. He's Greek. Oh, thank God. <sighs> thank No, Now Hassan, Hassan's upset now, though. Oh, my God, typical, you guys. Typical Greek this behavior. Is... <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Facebook says his wife is Jewish. Has oh, there it is. His wife. There is it is. Jewish? Is that enough? That means his children. <laughs> that means his children are <laughs> Jews. Not for Facebook. Yeah. They says his wife is Jewish and he has Jewish kids. All right. That means his children are Jewish. He's Greek. Can we just be happy on. with yeah. that? <laughs> he's Greek. He's, Look, he's not even. He's not. He's got. <laughs> Moments like this and the reaction from fan bases like this and how like comfortable people like Jason Whitlock, for example, get straight up saying like the media is controlled by Jews make me truly understand why so many people are careful about not even uh, not even allowing a little bit of, of uh, touchy things to be said that could be even perceived as borderline anti-Semitic or borderline bigoted. You know what I mean? Because like. So many people in defense of Kanye West came out and were so comfortable just straight up being like, well, why can't he say it? It's true. Right. And it blew my fucking mind that so many people were just like straight up just holding on to that resentment uh, without I, ever analyzing it. I don't talk about anti-Semitism on the Internet because I feel like people just use it against me and then they go, all he does, he's just another Jew complaining about anti-Semitism, but... In truth, I feel like in terms of the of the bigoted behaviors and racist uh, opinions you can hold, people are the most comfortable being anti-Semitic. Like you can just be pretty much openly anti-Semitic almost, and like it's not that big of a deal. I feel like. I mean, the reason why it's a big deal is not because Kanye West is being anti-Semitic; it's that uh, Kanye West is is such a powerful media figure that he has diehard stands, some of which are also even more anti-Semitic than Kanye is. They feel emboldened. Uh, well, you but don't. then also yeah. people will act out on these desires or uh, further spread anti-Semitic conspiracies and try to legitimize it. Uh, you're just creating a larger army of anti-Semites. Oh, somebody asked what this shirt is. It comes out next month. Um, you know, what I do like is that in this very official uh, letter from Chase, they address him as yay. Yeah. Did he? F did I think he might have. That's his name. Did he? Ian would know. Did he formally change his name to that? Uh, I think so. Yeah, okay. I think that actually just is his name now. Yeah. Okay. Fire. <clears throat> Dear Yay. The so, other thing about the bank thing too that I was reading, uh, and this was more just speculation, but you know he just blew up his fucking Gap deal recently, and right. also now he's like attacking Adidas, which is Adidas is the reason he's a billionaire. It's not his music. Hundred, um, and so that whole thing is collapsing as well. And the account that's being uh, that he's getting kicked off of it's it's not like a personal banking account. It's like it's like a commercial banking account and for his LLC, right? And so you know his you know arguably the bank they probably did a risk assessment and were like we're not going to work with this guy anymore. He's way too volatile. You know he's he's uh, bombing out of contracts left and right. And I don't know. It it seems pretty reasonable it's for a bank to not want to work with him. It's getting a little dicey, bro, for yeah. him to anyone to associate with him. I mean, right, exactly. So toxic. I'm surprised that Adidas. Uh, they said it's under review. I'm surprised they didn't outright be like, "This isn't working." Yeah. I mean, and by the way, his Gap collab must have been such a train wreck, not because of controversy, but because cr it was creatively awful, super expensive. It was just horrible. It was in fucking giant trash. Literally. In giant trash bags, <laughs> the whole thing was a disaster. I don't think people were buying. No, I don't think so either. I remember I went to the I went to a mall like a month or two ago um, on like a weekend, and it was packed. It was like yeah. fucking juicing in there. Yeah, and the gap was a fucking ghost town. There was nobody in there, and just the stupid that, giant trash bags. That's not good. Just giant black trash bags full of his clothes just sitting all over the store. Nobody was interested. I always found that partnership so weird. Like Gap and Ye Yeezy, it's just, I don't get it.
I mean, he took shots at Virgil Abloh, um, and, yeah. and some more information was revealed about their their tumultuous relationship. It's obvious that he had like a lot of resentment for Virgil yeah, I don't because know Virgil you... was able to because Virgil uh, got the Louis Vuitton deal, which he thought was was his deal to be had. You know what I mean? He, right. He, he just he just has so many petty resentments that have turned into these like incredible lifelong blood feuds. Well, now he considers that he's saying Virgil's my best friend and but they even killed while he, him. Yeah, he said that uh, being a BLM ambassador at Louis Vuitton. Uh, just like Bar Barack Obama was a BLM ambassador for the White House, uh, is what aged them rapidly and, and actually killed Virgil, uh, gave him cancer, made him bald, and killed him. Jesus. That's what he said. Yeah, it's pretty incredible that he compares himself to Virgil because a lot of people have opinions in the fashion world about him, but what he built with Off-White is insane and so much more than what Kanye ever has done in fashion. This is how, by the way, his clothing... Have you seen this picture? No. This is how the shit was laid out and got. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I I don't have an issue with his uh, designs. I think, like, athleisure and, like, skater culture made big waves within the fashion community, and I think Kanye West played a role in that. Kanye West is right when he says he played a, a significant role in, like, the Kardashian brand uh, getting elevated into, like, being a, a fashion brand, you know what I mean? Um, but... Uh, and and I don't even disagree with him when he says, like, uh, a, a lot of these mega corporations exploit black culture and black people in general... Uh, but ultimately, the the solutions that he offers to that problem uh, are are oftentimes either ineffective or downright the exact opposite. Like putting on a White Lives Matter T-shirt is not going to uh, be a solution to uh, to to white supremacist institutions, right? It's it's ridiculous. Uh, here is there. Oh, there's one worker constantly folding the shirts and putting them back in the trash bag. But that's over, right? Is that shit all gone? No, the gap? I went last. Oh, it's still week, there, and still there, still oh, full. Oh man, they're yeah. gonna be having crazy. Yeah, I believe the, sales the announcement was just that they were uh, not gonna renew it or they're winding it down uh, or whatever. Oh but it wasn't like an instant. I'm gonna go buy some of that shit. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna Wait do. Wait till Black Friday. That shit's all gonna be on heavy discount. <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, then after going on his anti-Semitic tour, uh, he shows up at the Daily Wire. Ben Shapiro's. I mean, this is just media such cornball behavior. I mean, what the fuck? These guys, they don't give a shit about anything. With the Ray J. Wire. With Ray J. It's of all so people. weird. <laughs> My boy Ray J, dude. <laughs> and Kid Rock, man. Prominent Mr. voice. Mr. I hit it first. Uh-huh. We love you know? it. We love me some Kid Rock. Yeah, made a song about his baby mama. That's crazy. That, that is wild. I mean, that's just... Uh, well, conservatives are cucks, so that, that kind of... Oh, goes, mm. true, yeah. true. That is, true. That is like, more conservative shit. Mm. Get your fucking ass up. Anyway. Also kind of awesome that Kid Rock is welcome at uh, the Daily Wire, considering their current crusade to defend uh, children, um, seeing as he is... In his music, brags about uh, no. banging minors on a regular basis. Wait, Kid Rock does yeah. that? In his, give me, let me, let me, uh, let me send you. Let me send you. Culture sweaty. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> well, yo, I want some bar Kid Rock bars. Drop that shit on me. Uh, while you look those up, here is uh, Kanye West being asked if he wishes harm on Jewish people by TMZ. If you're already being asked that question, you fucked up. Yeah. You gone too far. Bum, bum, bum. By the way, TMZ does not claim us. I love TMZ. They made an exception for us. Give a shout out to them. What do you think of the film, Kanye? I love it. Yeah. yeah. That's all the only question you got? Oh no. Uh, did you? Do you agree? Dude, he's so oh fucking my crazy. I know. He Look, got that, scared. That smile. He to got that so scared. scared. Oh no. Watch this shit. Uh, and he's like, "What, bitch? Did you what?" Wait, what did he what did he say back to him? Is that the only question you've got? Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you regret saying the your comments about Jewish people this week as well? Is that something you uh, trigger some controversy with your your comments? Do you think that the comment came just out of the blue, or do you think there was a reason why I felt? I presume there's a reason. So why why you said what you said? Do you, do you wish harm on Jewish people? No. No, no way. No. But I do feel that in Hollywood, with, especially with black entertainers, I've had a lot of bad experiences. And if people use that anti-Semite idea 
to cover up bad business. To say, hey, if you call somebody out on bad business, that means you're being anti-Semitic. So I feel happy to have crossed the line of that idea so we can speak openly. What the fuck? About he, even his, just call out the individual you know, that you had a bad even experience his, with. Even then. his fucking defense is still inherently anti-Semitic. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Let me read it because it's kind of hard to say. He says, no, but I feel that in Hollywood, especially with black entertainers, I've had a lot of bad experiences. And people use that anti-Semite idea to cover up bad business. To say, hey, if you call someone out on bad business, that means you're being anti-Semitic. I feel happy to cross the line on that idea so we can speak openly. Yeah, he's so brave. He's such a bold truth teller. He's like, <laughs> we have to talk. We have to be anti-Semitic sometimes. You don't understand. This is tactical anti-Semitism. <laughs> like, no, you can call out the exploitative nature of Hollywood, as many artists have, okay, over and over again, without just somehow making it about the <laughs> Jews. That's the problem. Yep. The anti-Semitism is the problem, not the fact that Hollywood is predatory, and, and inherently exploitative and, and abuses and uses black bodies as though they are disposable, uh, whether it be the music industry, whether it be Hollywood across the board, right? Like, this is, that, that's real. That's a real thing. Sure. And, and of course, Kanye West has first-hand experience with that as a, as a black creator, you know? But none of that, <laughs> none of that, like, fighting against that uh, is not going to happen by wearing a White Lives Matter shirt Aligning yourself with uh, Candace Owens, going to the uh, premiere of like uh, you know an anti-black uh, documentary that the Daily Wire is posting, or saying that you know Hollywood has bad business and saying that is n uh, not anti-Semitic. No, saying that isn't anti-Semitic, but that's not what you said. Right. Yo, let me read you this Kid Rock line. Are you ready? Oh Jesus, am I? I don't know. He goes, "Young ladies, young ladies, I like them underage. See." Some say it's statutory, but I say it's mandatory. <laughs> yep. That is a real... That's a Kid Rock song? Yes. What's the name of that song? It's called Cool Daddy Cool. And it is from the Osmosis Jones soundtrack no, album. That was in Osmosis Jones? For a children's cartoon. What the fuck? I don't, I think, it was a, I don't think it was a kid's movie. I think that was more for... I, by the way, I, that was one of the I worst... That was a kid's movie. It was, yeah, it was like a cartoon. I part? know it was a cartoon, but I don't think it was a kids' movie. Was it rated? Uh, let's see. What do you, I asked, "What is a rating?" You said fifty. I thought I thought you meant the like, Rotten Tomatoes rating. Oh, Osmosis Jones. Uh, it's rated PG. PG. Oh yeah. fuck me. That's yeah. That's pretty young. Yeah, I remember going to see that movie. It had Chris Rock and Bill Murray. I was like, "How could this be bad?" I was the only person in the theater. Man, it was the only time that ever happened to me. One fucking. One group of people, me and my friends. Side note, when Kid Rock talks shit about Beyonce and her fans ruin his social media posts. What did he say about Beyonce? Oh, he said no. he doesn't know how she's so popular. And oh, Kid Rock, you're like you to talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. Seriously. <laughs> the bow of the bow Please, guy. Please, bitch. Her fans destroyed Get him. in your fuck, get in line, idiot. <laughs> what a stupid asshole. How dare you say that about anyone? He couldn't post anything without there being bees everywhere. Is that still to this day? It, you'll still see it a little bit. Uh, I checked not too long ago, actually, but it's not as common as it was. Yo, I still wrapping my head around that line. Um, young ladies, young ladies, I like them underage, see? Some say that's statutory, but I say it's mandatory. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, that's like that. Jesus, that that was <laughs> on the, that's that was not a, a, PG that was a line. fundamental plank of like rock music for for many, many decades yeah. you know true wait it wasn't that but osmosis jones wasn't like during that no, age of no 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 i know which is what i'm saying is he's just like bringing it back he's, well, he's keeping that momentum alive yeah osmosis jones came out in 2001. what are people s s simping for kid rock in the chat no no i don't think, I don't <laughs> I don't think so for kid rock um i see people saying they love that movie though yeah, I was why I didn't say it was movie. bad. I, I liked. It's a great movie. I thought it was better than um, than people gave it credit for. I liked the movie. I don't know why. I remember it. liking it. I like Osmosis Jones. Chill I don't the remember the out, bro. I don't remember the Kid Rock song. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're, so that's basically the whole arc there on Kanye. Uh, Elon, uh, just to touch on this because it's in the title, Elon Musk is trying to pro uh, broker uh, P 
peace in the Ukraine and trying to broker peace between Kanye and the Jews. (laughs) He's all over the place. He's got a lot on his hands. He's a deal maker. He uh, has proposed just giving Ukraine to Russia. Why don't we just appease uh, Putin? That'll that'll play well. Ukraine Russia peace redo elections and annex regions under UN supervision. Russia leaves if that is the will of the people. Well, that's going to be a little difficult because like that that has there's a displacement that has already occurred at that point. Um, he says, Crimea, formerly part of Russia, as it has been since ni- 1783, until Khrushchev's mistake. Uh, that one I'm not going to touch on. Um, I think that that was something that Zelensky, not the formerly part of Russia, but that was something Zelensky was like willing to push back 15 years into the future because there was an original 15-point uh, peace treaty uh, and negotiations that took place that they kind of blew up. Uh, water supply to Crimea assured. <laughs> that's understandable. And Ukraine remains neutral. It, like, you know. It, I love I love just the, the idea of asking Twitter. Twitter! What do you think? Let me know what you think, yo! Well, and Twitter rejected it. <laughs> anyway, so I oh, guess that's, that, that's, 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 the world. that's pretty He bad. actually lost the poll. Yeah, yeah that's pretty bad for it's Elon. Truly. And but then he said it was bots attacking it or something. He, he, but it doesn't matter. It's that's, the Twitter poll. That's it has why no Twitter polls are stupid life. as fuck. And then this conservative think tank guy said... Um, he got off the phone with Elon Musk, and he told him he was on, speaking with Putin and the Kremlin directly about Ukraine. He t- also told me what he said Kremlin's red lines were. And what that, were the red lines? Uh, he did not say, unfortunately, but Elon Musk did say nobody should trust Bremer, which, by the way, is not saying that he's lying. Just yeah. that nobody should trust him. He's a snake. Um... What do you, what's your thoughts on Elon Musk talking to Putin about the situation in Ukraine? Is it neutral? (laughs) Is it weird? Is it? I wish we lived in a world where like it wasn't one fucking psychotic, uh, kleptocratic (laughs) dictator, uh, ruining the lives of millions of people. And then like a solution to that was another like billionaire (laughs) oligarch from the West Mm -hmm. trying to have a conversation with him. You know, these things would not happen if we didn't have such, uh, such a concentration of power at the top for people that we basically uh, see as deities, you know what I mean? But that's capitalism for you. But is this good, bad, neutral? Like, what's your take on the fact that they're talking? I think Vladimir Putin's going to do whatever the fuck Vladimir Putin wants to do, as he has demonstrated time I think, and time yeah. again, even if it directly hurts the overarching goals that he claims he has set for himself, whether it be the fake reasoning behind, like, the denazification of Ukraine, which is fucking bullshit. Like, the only thing you do when you invade a country is embolden the most reactionary elements within that country. If your goal is to undermine the influence of NATO, the only thing that you do when you kill, uh, you know, thousands of people is, is galvanize a position of NATO within Western Europe, Eastern Europe, all parts of Europe, uh, and, and, you know, that all tactically is also a, a misstep. So on top of it being obviously immoral, gross, a human rights violation through and through. So uh, yeah, according to Vice, he actually spoke to Putin before putting out his uh, poll. But yeah, I think you're right. I think Putin, Putin. is going to make a useful idiot out of Elon. I mean, he already has. pretty. I much. do think ultimately there needs to be an off ramp for. Uh, for Russia, if you want to avoid right. further conflict and further bloodshed, how can we do but it that? Doesn't, yeah, but it doesn't. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. How can like what's a reasonable off ramp for the re- them that doesn't include them stealing land from Ukraine? The reasonable off off ramp would probably be somewhere along the lines of the Minsk Agreement. If you want to consider like uh, LPR DPR as like autonomous regions that are still a part of Ukraine, but I don't think that's something that Ukrainian people wanted it initially, and it's certainly not something that. Uh, you know, Vladimir Putin even wants at this point, it seems like, it seems like he just wants uh, the entirety of uh, the Eastern Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian front to be uh, completely uh, annexed and, and a part of Russian territory, which is, is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm getting a little worried about the situation out there because... Yeah, and they're talking... Russia's getting absolutely fucked by Ukraine. Yeah. And there's but lots, I, you know... Unfortunately, I have to go because I have oh. a call. Okay, so, uh, well, hopefully the bombs don't drop before next week. Uh, but we are safe underground. The rest of you are fucked. Yeah, good luck. Good luck out there. I mean, we're in L.A. We would definitely, if there was, like, all-out nuclear war... I've accepted that. We're done. L.A.'s not safe. Yeah, no. We're, we're gone, Is though. Middle America safe? Safer than the coast, for sure. Yeah, L.A.'s not the best. Let's go, let's go to Arkansas. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I go, well, if I'm in the valley, am I safe? Uh, it's probably safer than the rest of LA. Well, here we're not safe. Woodland this Hills. Yeah, no, we're dead. Yeah. We're dead, dead. Yeah, we're dead, dead here. Woodland yeah, Hills is all right. Encino, maybe not. Yeah, but you better pray that bomb. You're not at work when that bomb drops. Yeah, because you're vaporized here, boy. <laughs> and we'll just make it fast, right, Hassan? <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, appreciate y'all. Let's keep it. Uh, Let's take my Jew card, please. I'm begging you. Here, so I'll take it. Free charge. God damn it. All right. See you next week. Right.